Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Mission Foods New York Short Track, presented by Mad Max Indian Motorcycle. I'm Scotty Dubler, high on top of the booth. Joining me in the booth right now, we got a special guest from nearby, not too far away in Ohio. It's Tommy Duma, TDFJ.com. Tommy, welcome to New York. Thank you, Scotty. It's great to be here. It's, uh, yeah, we've got a little cabin, too, that's about two and a half hours, so it's uh, almost like a home race for me. Yeah, like a home race for you. Home I like race. it. It's a short track, but it is very fast. As the bikes roll onto the racetrack, we'll talk about the track a little bit more. First round of practice is underway. Way. Mission Super Twins rolling onto the track. All of them be out there at one time. The one is Briar Bauman. 44 is Brandon Robinson. The 9 is the jammer Jared Meese. 20, Jared Vandekoy. 95, J.D. Beach. 92 is Brandon Price. 37 is Robson Bauman. 67, Davis Fisher. 36 in New Yorker, Kobe Carlisle. 27 is Bugs Pearson. 43 is Chris Foley. 69, Sammy Halbert. And the 72, Larry Pegram. Taking a look at the storylines coming into the New York short track. Three for the road. Briar Bauman, Brandon Robinson, Jared Meese battling for the championship. Van Decoy, elite. He's trying to get up there and get in the thick of things. The price is right. Brandon Price still looking for his first win in American Flat Track Super Twins. And Kobe Carlisle, a little hometown cooking. Carlisle from nearby Canandaigua, New York. Super Twins on the track for the first time. This is their first practice session. They'll get two practice sessions today and two rounds of qualifying for our premier class, the Mission Super Twins. On the screen is the number nine, the jammer, Jared Meese. Looks like Breyer pulls up, and I think he wanted a little bit of breathing room right there. And now he's getting back up, up to speed. So I think he said, I'm right here with Jared. I'm going to let him go. I, yeah, I think he was there watching the lines and then uh, wanted to get a little fresh air. And Breyer has the quickest time so far, 19.017. 19.017. White flag is out. One more lap to go. Wow, quick lap. 19.017, man. That's a quick lap around the short track. That's faster than your talent ride. It was 21.7. That's not bad, though. Yeah. Look at this. Bronson Bauman, the younger brother, moves into second. 19.052 for Bronson. So it's the Baumans out front right now in practice. 18.892 for Bronson. No, Bronson goes to the top spot. The 37 goes to the top spot. How about that? The younger brother. He's got it. Yeah. That's a quick time so far. They told him in the riders meeting to, they, they wanted a practice start to stop over there on the back straightaway out here in practice. Get a good launch off the uh, back straightaway. That way it doesn't tear up the front straightaway. You can right. see it's a little bit tacky right there. You can see some of the, the wetness on the track. Tommy and you and I both went around there in the Honda Talon. Uh, I saw 70 miles an hour on the speed limit. I don't know. Yeah, that's, what I saw. that's what Man. I saw. Mine was 70. And, and, and on a 1,000cc Honda Talon, can you imagine that on two wheels? Yeah, no. Man, you used to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was our first class. That was our Mission Super Twins presented by s, &S Cycles. Up next will be our AFT singles practice. AFT singles will have five laps. Let me get to the right sheets here. we got a bunch of single riders out here. We're going up to the... Uh, See if they can make it into the main event. Dallas Daniel, strategy adjustment. He has to rethink things, try to get back to the top spot. Cop rising to the top, finished up second last weekend. And then red, blue, and orange. The battle of the brands are especially seen out here. Tommy, you've got the KTM Maxwell. You've got the blue Yamahas, the Essence and Yamahas. The, the red is the Hondas, Honda. the, the Turner Honda team. And your points leader leads him out, the 18 of Maxwell. Looks like he's got his hand down right now. He's trying to set something on the top of the Handlebars, and they start picking up the speed. Right now, singles on the track. Max Wells on the 18. Dallas Daniels is on the 1. Mikey Rush is 15. 17 is Henry Wiles. 13, Morgan Mishler. 52, Shannon Sexter Bauman. 21, Trevor Bruner. 48, Trent Lowe. 143, Cody Cop. And the 105 is the Broiler, Brandon Kitchen. What are you thinking so far in the singles class, Tommy? I love the singles class because there's so many different brands that do represent, and uh, the talent level is stacked. It's just so deep. Yeah, Dallas looks like he's determined right now. He just jumped by... Uh, Maxwell went out front. He wants to show some speed, and I think he's trying to prove a point right now. Set the pace, get out front where he likes to be. He won a lot of races last year. He's only won one so far this year. I think that plate and the number one, it's heavy. It's weighing it is, on him a little bit. Right. It's, it's a lot of pressure, and uh, getting out there sometimes just in practice to get out in front, get some clean air, and uh, settle in, it, it builds your confidence. And, and during the off weeks, he won a couple of races there at, at North Kansas. He had a good showing last weekend in New York. They were up here racing. Uh, a couple of races in Medina was last Sunday. Uh, Square Deal was last Saturday. He got to run with some fast guys. Uh, and you know, maybe he's getting his confidence back. And there's a look at Shana Texter Bauman. She's another rider that needs to get some confidence. She's finished fifth here before at this New York short track, so she's no stranger to uh, running up front. But she hasn't won since round number two down there in Volusia, Florida. 
White flag is out. One more left to go. Keep an eye on Shayna. It's Trent Lowe, the Wally Brown Racing Suzuki. Goes to the top spot, 19.024 for the 48 bike. Trent Lowe, uh, Suzuki. Now he drops even faster, 18.991, 18.991 for Trent Lowe, the 48. Faster There's, than the super. Yeah, I wasn't going to say that, but you, you, you can. Part-timer. Part <laughs> yeah. Trent Lowe right here on the screen has the quickest time out here in practice, 18.991, the only bike in the 18-second range here in the singles. Morgan Mischler currently second, 19.116. And then you got the Honda 21 Trevor Bruner. So Suzuki, KTM, Honda. The first Yamaha is back there in the fifth, fifth spot. That is Mikey Rush. We saw Dallas Daniels lead every lap, but he's back in eighth right now in this first session of practice, 19.506. All right, so up next will be group number two of our singles class. It's the AFT singles class. 51, Cole Zabala makes his return back to flat track. 19, James Ott. 99, Kevin Stallings. 38, the Dean Machine, Tanner Dean. He's won here before. 54 is Michael Enderbitson. The 124 is Hunter Bauer. They call him Showtime. He's from Canada. 26, Aiden Roos Evans. He's on a new ride this week. The 94 is Ryan Wells. 377, Ferran Carduce, the Spanish flat track champion, riding for the Wally Brown Racing Suzuki. And the 55, Tyler Raggio, back on his normal ride on his own personal Raggio Racing Sluggo Racing Honda. So Zabala missed. Well, he was going to miss DeCoin. Ended up missing Port Royal because he had surgery on his thumb. Looks like he's good to go. Get back at it. Take very long. Medicine's come a long way since, yeah. since, since we used to race. No they, they can fix things a, a lot quicker than they could back in the day. For sure. There's, I'm anxious to see what Fernand's going to do here with uh, the Wally Brown racing. Yeah, Ferran Cardusa has a good relationship with Suzuki over in Spain, so it's good to see him. And Wally Brown got teamed up. I think Brad Baker kind of helped facilitate that a little bit. There's a look at the 51 of uh, Zabala. Ferran Cardus is the 377 Suzuki there. He is a little bit deeper in the field. There's like a little bit of a hole going right at, right about the shutoff point going in turn one. Looks like uh, just a little bit of a bump right here. It's a car track, though, so you expect some kind of bump sometimes. Not every racetrack can be perfectly cool, top, table, smooth. Port Royal. That was huge, wasn't it? Probably as close to the pool table you can get. I hope we go back there. I think we had a great turnout. I think the promoter was happy. As we take a look at Ferran Cardus, ooh, the 54, Michael Enderbitz, and almost got into the rear tire of the 377. Michael, Michael has uh, hasn't been to all the FT races. Now he's 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 been taking and choosing a little bit. It's it's hard coming from California to be gone that long, you know. And and as the white flag comes out here, group number two. But uh, Kevin Stallings, the 99, goes up to second on that last lap, 19.059 for the 99 bike. Stallings moves into second here in practice. The 99th quickest one on the racetrack is the checkered flag will be coming out right there for the 51 of Cole Zavala. Kevin's been struggling as of late, but uh, it's nice to see him back on top here. He's, he's uh, got, got it together, it looks like, so far. 19.059 for stalling is the 99th bike. Had a quick lap. That was group number two. There are three groups of practice for the AFT singles class. Up next will be the third and final group. 161 is Casey Cisco. 135, Ezra Brusky from Milwaukee. 157, Ian Wolf. 243 is the Jet, Jared Lowe. 298, that's Sweet Heat, Trent Pickle, another Canadian rider. Lane Hart's on the 176. Damon Ream, a brand new pro rider, just got his pro license this week. He is riding for the Waters Auto Body team, who is a New York-based team. So he's your hometown rider and team to be cheering for, the 110 of Damon Ream. Billy the Kid, Billy Ross 109, and Jordan Jean from Michigan on the 156. This is our third and final group. Of our first round of practice, here they come. It's Brusky on the 135 leading them out. You see a lot of three digit numbers uh, until you make it national and get the, you know, get points to get the two digit number. We've got to see a lot of three digit numbers, especially in the single class. Right on. Just like how we used to have letters. Right. Yeah, district not, letters. Yep, three digit numbers, a little bit different, kind of similar, similar meaning though. So on the racetrack, the third and final group of our first round of practice, still still Trent Lowe. 18.991, quick lap for low earlier. Uh, actually, Bronson's quick lap for 18.892. So, oh, we got a rider down over here. We got rider down in turn number one. 298, Trent Pickle. They call him Sweet Heat. He picks himself up, gets him out of the way. We keep on going in flat track. We race until we see a red or a checkered. So, that's still yellow. So, he's up and it has cleared the racetrack. He's trying to get that bike into gear. Didn't see him go down, but he's got that thing back into gears. Puts the shield back down on the limb. It's going to cost him a couple of laps. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have to push the limit to, to figure out where your shutoff point is. That's right. You don't know how fast you're going until, uh, until you crash. You can see the line 
going into one, he lo low sided. And just slid up there. Yeah. He, got, he actually got stopped before he got all the way up to the progressive air fence, so that's good. No harm, no foul. Hopefully everything's okay with the bike. And maybe just since Pride's got another rider down in turn one into the air fence, he goes. Is it the same guy? The white flag comes out. It might be the same guy. Red flag is out. I believe it is. This, I believe it is Trent. Watch out. One rider Whoa. barely threads the needle. Red flag is out. So this rider got into the air fence. I believe it is. Again, Trent Pick, or yeah, Trent Pickle going down again. He's sitting up. He's taking his uh, helmet off right now. Hopefully he just lost his breath. There goes the uh, safety crew headed up there right now. They got to make sure that last bike goes by before they head on up there. But uh, they're picking up the motorcycle right now. It is the 298 again over there. Turn number one two times, almost two laps in a row. Not a good way to start off the night here at the New York Short Track for Trent. Maybe something was wrong with his, his bike, or his rear wheel or something locked Break? up. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, but two times, uh, and this time it looks like he went in a little bit wider. You can see that one groove up the racetrack, and he goes up into the uh, progressive air fence. They pick the motorcycle up. They'll pick up the banners over there. That is an air fence on the outside of the racetrack. I think that's the best invention and best oh. safety we've had, you know, in flat track. It's helped out a whole bunch. I, I know. I wish I had those when yeah, I was racing. So I was just going to say, I, I ate a lot of hay in my day. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not a cow. <laughs> no, I am now, though, I think. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, far from my race weight. So we are here at the Mission Foods New York Short Track presented by Mad Max Indian Motorcycle. The uh, band Chasing Neon is just below us out here. They'll be playing a little bit later on today. They were playing earlier today. They got a, an awesome area to go over down here, get some food under the shade. They've got ice cream under the pavilion. It's man, it's this. I love coming back to this racetrack. It's a great facility for sure. Absolutely, it's a short track. We took a few laps on the Honda Talon. Uh, when you come off a of turn or two, it kind of arcs. It's like a D shaped. If you could see it from up above, it looks like a big capital letter D. It is a big D in the. Uh, when you go into three, normally where you would shut off, on this racetrack, you're going a lot deeper into the corner before you lift. So, yeah, so you can you arc it out really wide and just bury it off into turn three. It looks like Trent Pickle is up, and he's climbed into that back of that side-by-side. -side. They're going to give him a ride back to the pit area, so that's good for him. Uh, hopefully he'll be uh, just just maybe knock the breath out of him. He'll get a little free ride back to the uh, pit area. But, again, the track surface, uh, it's, it's, it's clay. It's a hard-packed track. It's it's good. It's good for motorcycle racing. I know they race cars out here a lot, but uh, it's definitely good to be back here. We missed coming here last year. Uh, we've been here in 2018 and 2019, so it's good to be back at this this great facility. It's a great racetrack for sure. Uh, nice groove. Should be. I think it's good. It's going to groove up even better and get faster as the night goes on. Again, right now here in the singles class, the fastest bike is the 48, 18.991. We'll take a look at this racetrack here. There it is from yep. up above. Now you can see the D shape. It is exactly. a big capital D. Almost looks like an O, but that back straightaway arcs out. Never even has a real straightaway. It's the D for Duma. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Where's the T, D, and the F, J? <laughs> we got the D up there. We need a T, and it's missed a few letters. But a great big capital D is what it looks like. It's a really cool shot. That's a shot from the drone from earlier today before we loaded in the pit area. Beautiful racetrack out here. Bikes are firing back up. The... Uh, Group getting set to come out is group number three, the final group of the AFT singles. After this, we will have the uh, production twins practice and the Astro Invitational. That's what Tommy Doom is here for. He wants to see the little tacos out there. All the old guys. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Three laps to go. This is their five lap practice sessions for these riders. The 298 doesn't look like he's able to keep going. Green and white flag is out. I like that. That's kind of different. Last lap here of our third and final group of AFT singles. Wait for that sugar flag to come out. And there it is right now. 29 entries today in the AFT singles class as the checkered flag comes out for our first round of practice for the AFT singles. Big field of riders. That's pretty cool. I see Reem is uh, sitting in 15th place uh, on his first professional race. Not he's bad for the rookie. Yeah. yeah, number 110. He was number 17 as an amateur, so he's got a new number out here. Bikes are taking their little practice start on the back straightaway. They will enter and exit the racetrack outside of turn number four. There's the 176 getting another practice start right there on the back straightaway. Not real familiar with that rider. We'll try to get to know him a little bit later on. Up next will be the AFT Production Twins practice session. There are two groups, 
65 is Corey Texar on points leader stretching out that points lead, but the most recent winner will be coming out second to 79 of Dalton Gotan, the Harley Davidson, doing it for Boswell's Harley Davidson. 49, Chad Coe. 62 is Dan Demand, Dan Bromley. 25 is Ben Lau. 68, Ryan Varnes. 44, Cameron Smith. The 10 of Johnny Lewis on the Royal Infield. And Slick, Danny Eslick, the four time Daytona 200 winner on the number 64, Kawasaki. Storylines for the production twins class for Gautier. Confidence is key. He won the last round. Can he keep keep the momentum going as it comes into here? Barnes, change of fortune. He is. Uh, if he doesn't have any bad luck, he has no luck at all. And looking good, Lewis. Johnny Lewis is looking really comfortable on that Royal Infield. He's found some speed. Chad Coast is going backwards a little bit. A little reverse results for him. So he's trying to turn things around out here at the Wheat Sport uh, Speedway, New York Short Track. There's Barnes. Like the bright green leathers. Looks like he. Shot the throttle off earlier, and looks like 44 Cameron Smith just about ran into his rear wheel. Look how close they are. I think I'd be spread out, wouldn't you, Tommy? They are just uh, wheel to wheel. Yeah, they're all going for the same line. Yeah, I think I would have spaced myself out a little bit more, but it's probably hard to get spaced out on such a short track. You know? right. 25 bit mile right there. There's slick on the 64 bike. That actually was a bike that used to be ridden by Davis Fisher when Fisher was on the Kawasaki Twin. Actually, that bike right there looks like that's one of the McGrain Racing Kawasaki. So I said that. I yeah. take it back. <laughs> <laughs> and he did buy one of he did buy one of the, the uh, bikes that uh, the dead fish used to ride. Oh, like, oh man, he had his hands full right there. White flag is out. Smith up there in that third. I'm sorry. Slick is up there in the third spot. Danny Eslick on that Kawasaki. Do it for RD Machine. Look at this. I got a text message right as we're talking about the brain racing roof systems. Josh Decker, Jerry Leroy, Clockworks Motion Pro. That's technology, man. Yes. I mean, look at this. Checkered flag is out. Group number one here at our production twins is Ryan Varnes at the quick spot time so far. 68 of Varnes. 19.435. Corey Texter second. We'll take a look at the replay. Watch the 64 on the inside. Gets it really sideways, and then it, all of a sudden it bit and kind of stood him up in the seat just a little bit. A little bounced him out of the saddle, Tommy. Yeah, a little, uh, he got a little front end, got real light there when his back end caught, and uh, good thing he saved it. And you, you gotta got to not, not quite let all the way off the throttle, right? You don't, if you yeah. chop the throttle, you're going over the handlebar. Right. Yeah. So you got to roll gotta keep it some off. power on it, keep that back wheel spinning. Group number two coming up next in just a second. It's a short track, but it's a very quick, very fast short track. The grooves up. What makes it a fast short track, Tommy, in your opinion? The surface, for right. one. And then as far as the, uh, this is 3.8, so it's a little bit bigger than a okay. traditional quarter okay. mile. All right. So that's going to give us a little faster time to get a little bit longer straightaways. But again, the shape of this track, you carry a lot of momentum going into into three. Absolutely. So the 42 on the screen right there, Jeremiah Duffy, Sammy O Racing Kawasaki, 223, Jeffrey Lowry. Just had him on the Off the Groove podcast, a good kid. And we great, learned a lot from him. Yeah, great interview. One, 161, Casey Cisco, the 91, I'm sorry, the 90s, Brandon Newman, New York rider. One six, I'm sorry, 16, Garrett Wilson. 22 is Mitch Harvitt. 30 is Brock Schwarzenbacher, the longest name in flat track, and getting his first ride on the twin, the 133 of David Wigan from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He bought himself a Harley Davidson from Bates Hines this, uh, while they had a couple weeks down. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of Jeffrey Lowry, I, I had no idea that he won national championships in every size bike that he that, competed on. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know if anybody else has done that. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to look through the notes. I'm, I'm sure there has been other people that have done that, but that's impressive. Yeah. And Rookie of the Year. Uh, well, not Rookie of the Year. I'm, I'm sorry. The uh, Horizon, Horizon Award. Award right. Fast Brain Award. He's won everything. As an amateur, his pro career just hasn't fulfilled just yet. But he's a machinist. He makes right. wheels for a lot of the riders, especially in, in, in American flat track. Yeah, he's a busy boy for sure. So and he's still young, 23, I think. Or, yep. Yeah, so he's got plenty of time for his career. There's Jeremiah Duffy, the 42. He's trying to get his luck put back together. He was running really fast a couple of weeks ago and just had a few gremlins that, that jumped up and bit him. Duffy knows how to ride a motorcycle. He's got some new autograph sheets coming from my friend Scott Hunter. Nice. Those are going to be really, really cool. Can't wait to see those. 42 moves up to second right there, the 19.450, just off the leader's time. So Duffy was out front every lap, 
and he lays down some quick laps out there. One nine point four five zero for the forty two. Corey Texter, our points leader, is up there in the third spot on the Yamaha. One nine point four eight six. Danny Eslick is fourth on the sixty four. One nine point five zero three. And fifth is the Holly Hot Rod Ben Lau, the number twenty five bike. That is it for the AFT Production Twins, presented by Vance and Hines. Up next, we will shift on over to your favorite class, Tommy. It is the Astro Invitational. Is it two strokes? Two smokes? Two smokes. Oh, two strokes. <laughs> yeah. They'll be rolling out on the track up next. Again, Boltaco Astros, motorcycles built in Spain. Two strokes. You can see they got a little bit of puff smoke. They run some oil mixed into their gas. And here they come rolling onto the track. 101, Pete DeSantis. 42 is Landry. 74 is DeWitt. 32 is the Jet, Jackie Mitchell. 64 is Flash, Charlie Roberts. 89, Rev and Kevin Barnes. Pop Pops on the 23, Lance Jones in the 88, Roger Durkey. Those are the bikes on the racetrack. Who are we going to be looking out for, Tommy? Uh, Jackie Mitchell did good here last time. Uh, I got second. I heard the 23 is on a really oh. fast motorcycle for tonight. I was just going to tell you, I think that uh, he might be the spoiler for sure. Pop Pop. This is the first round of practice for the Astros. They will get two or one round of practice, two rounds of qualifying, and then they will have uh, their race is a little bit later on. Actually, after opening ceremonies, we'll have the semifinals, then the Astro Main, and then the Mission Challenge. So, uh, and then we have a break in the action, and we'll have our three premier class main events. There's Rev and Kevin Barnes out there. He's got his old Memphis Shades uh, leathers on. It's crazy. He can still fit in his leathers. Mine, yeah. mine shrunk over the years. <laughs> yeah, mine too, for sure. <laughs> Kevin's always there. You know, he's, he's a lot of talent there. What? Don't let the age fool you. Did you race the Bull Taco very much? I, I raced a couple times with it. Back in the day, I was a Yamaha boy, so I was always uh, ahead of those Bull Tacos. Oh, <laughs> listen to him. <laughs> you know, Bull Tacos, my family and my grandfather have raced a lot of Bull Tacos. My dad raced some Bull Tacos. I raced one a couple times and, and had, a, had a lot of fun on them. Side by side over here, turns three and four. Fast time, Charlie Roberts, 19.831. Are you kidding me? 19.831? Wow. Is that that's quicker than the uh, production or almost quicker than production twins. The super twins when they first went out there were in the 19s. Man. 19.831 so far for Charlie Roberts. Jackie Mitchell second, Lance Jones is third right now. The Essenson backed 64 of Charlie Roberts comes to the checkered flag. Charlie Roberts, 64, 19.831. Looks like there's only one spot on the track that's an issue right here. It's just going this little, one. one little bump, you know, a breaking bump going in turn one. There's Charlie Roberts right there. As far as the rookies of 79, they've got a booth set up downstairs. And I don't know if you heard this or not because you were part of the rookies of 79 as well and friends. The, the gentleman that won at Port Royal donated that poster back cool. so we're gonna we're gonna raffle that off here this weekend we'll get more information on that uh we're gonna get that guy's name because i want to give him some some credit give him some love but yeah it's very he, cool he donated it back and so uh he will uh he will uh have that you know off, raffling off they're gonna walk around and sell raffle tickets tonight it'll be raffle off tomorrow night you don't have to be present to win so uh we're gonna take a quick break from new york it is the mission foods new york short track presented by mad max indian motorcycle first round of practice is in the books when we come back we'll start some qualifying here real soon from new york we'll be back your stomach growling or the sound of thousands of cc's circling the track fuel up for race day with mission foods rev those taste buds with fast and easy to create recipes that are winner's circle delicious try some of our mouth-watering tacos to piled high nachos fresh chips with guac and more start those engines because mission has you covered from the green flag to the checkered flag now that's too fast too tasty With over 300 world championship titles, for 44 years, Olean's advanced suspension technology has been providing the pinnacle of suspension for all areas of motorsports, for road or track, dirt or asphalt. When you choose Olean's products to elevate your performance, you get Olean's USA support and service to keep fueling your passion for excellence. Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport. 
welcome you to this high action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you too can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited. We support the sport. The rookies of 79 are former racers and champions of the sport who reunited in 2009 to form the official charity for American Flat Track. Ten years and over $1.7 million raised for our injured racers. Visit Rookies79.com to see how you can help. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. Brought to you by Yamaha and its best in class lineup of power sports vehicles. For more information on how you too can experience the pinnacle of performance both on and off road, visit YamahaMotorsports.com. Looking for more power? E3 spark plugs deliver more power, better fuel efficiency, and reduced emissions. The secret is in the patented diamond-shaped ground electrode that promotes a more complete burn of the fuel. Proven on the dyno and on the racetrack, the official spark plug of American Flat Track helps power champions on two wheels and four. Winners run E3. What are you running? Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs throughout America. Get a quote in under four minutes at American. Second round of practice uh, for the Mission Super Twins, but uh, we got a busy day here today. There's four classes racing today and four classes racing in the interior tomorrow night. Double header action at New York. Super Twins is the premier class. It is the Mission Super Twins presented by SNS. The storylines coming into today. I mean, it's got to be Briar Bauman. You also have, you got Brandon Robinson up there in the second, the point settings. Meese, third place, 133. You have Bandicoy, the rider that's on the move up towards the front. You got J.D. Beach back there, fifth. He's got one win. You got Brandon Price. Brandon Price looking, has been hot lately. Looking for his first ever yeah. win here in American Flat Track Premier Class. Right behind him, Bronson Bauman. Bronson was quickest in practice. Are you surprised at all with that there, Tommy? No, not at all. I mean, uh, Brandon's been tough. He's, this is his kind of racetrack. So taking a look at these storylines here for the Mission Super Twins. Again, three for the road. Briar, Brandon, and Jared, those are the three on top of the box right now, or in the top three of the points. Vandekoy Elite, he's got some fourth place finishes. He's moving up there. He's been real consistent, you know, four top fours in a row. He wants to get up there. He wants to be one of those three we're talking about. Right. Brandon Price, the price is right, still looking for his first win in the Mission Super Twins. And Carlisle, a little hometown cooking out here. Colby Carlisle's done well on a singles at this racetrack, I believe. I was going to say, did he win he in got third, 2018? He got third up here okay. at, at, at the short track, but uh, he's trying to get his first podium in the Mission Super Twins class, and it could happen here tonight. This is home track. He'd, uh, I'm sure he'd, be, he'd like to stand on top of the box at any level. Absolutely. And let's talk about the storylines for the AFT singles class here as we move in. D Dallas Daniels' strategy adjustment. He started off the season really good. He started off his pro career last year on fire, winning uh, you know eight, eight races, just reeling off win after win after win. To, it looks like more he's on conservation mode instead of on charging mode. What do you think, Tommy? Uh, you know, last year he, he didn't even make the main at the start at Volusia and then really came on strong. So maybe, you know, this is just a, a slow start and he's going to finish strong for the rest of the season. And then how about young Cody Cop in his first, you know, his first year of his career? He finished up second at Port Royal, was mixing up with the leader, Maxwell, and uh, kind of ran out of steam right there just a little bit. I saw his dad was working on brand new 2022 Hondas down there in the pit area. He's putting those new clutches in, getting ready to go. And then we have the Battle of the Brands, red, blue, and orange. You got the, you know, the Turner Racing American Hondas. You got the Estenson Blue uh, Monster Energy Yamahas. And, and you got the, uh, the, the factory KTMs. You know, this, this battle started... 
back in motocross. The motocross and supercross days, they're carrying it over yes. into American flat track now. It's good to have the, the battle of the brands. It's so good for American flat track. I think it's great for the fans as well because everybody's got their favorite brand. And uh, you see that in production twins as well. So. Yeah, yeah, diversity is great. And, and, you know, sometimes you might have a favorite rider out, th- rider out there, but if you got a Yamaha back home in your garage, which, you know, I think you do, you'd be cheering for a Yamaha rider, right? Right, right on. Yeah, if you don't yeah. have a favorite rider. Yeah, especially some of the fans that are coming out uh, that perhaps don't follow the AFT, so they're, they may be more brand loyal. So I think uh, it's good for the brands as well so that they can sell motorcycles, and uh, it's great for uh, the, the racers to have a lot of different options. There's the young... Cody Cop right there. He's taking a look. They're putting some more water on the racetrack. They call him Hot Rod. Do you know why they call him Hot Rod? I don't. He was born at 4.54 a.m. in a 4.54 Chevy. Ah. A big block is known as the Hot Rod. Wow, look at that. TDFJ.com. Oh, look back, at that. Huh? Did, did you plan that? Did you tell me? <laughs> no, you, that was great. Put your phone down. I told you. You're texting him right now. Say, hey, they got the camera on. You, you know, turn around so we can see that. How about just have it, having your father a grand national champion, right? So oh. not a bad, bad guy to have in your corner. Big, big shoes to fill yeah. for sure here at Weed Sports uh, Speedway. Let's also let's talk about the production twins class, the AFT production twins mid-season storylines. We're halfway through for Gautier. Confidence is key. You know, he's he's – Won the 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 first temp, first ever win on the Harley Davidson XG750. Then he went up to the Super Twins. Now he is back in the Production Twins. He won the last round. He's got to have some confidence coming in. You got Ryan Varnes, change of fortune. He's had nothing but bad luck. He did get a second place finish at Lima, but now he's up here uh, at the top qualifying spot so far in practice, looking good. Lewis, Johnny Lewis on the Royal Infield. Uh, you know, it's a bike that they're still doing R and D like every week, and he's still getting faster and faster. And then you've got Chad Coast, the four story line. Kind of some backwards, backwards. results. Yeah, he's kind of struggling a little bit. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what he can do to turn things around. I don't know if this is one of his kind of, you know, fortes, this little short track down here. I say little, but, uh, you know, maybe he might find some, find the groove out here tonight. This With this racetrack, it's uh, not necessarily a horsepower track. So, you know, Johnny, with the, the R&D of the Royal Winfield, he's got a great chance. And uh, I think this comes down to rider. Rider and, and throttle, throttle control. control. You know, you know, be easy on that throttle. Be nice and smooth on that throttle. You can't just hammer it like you can at Lima. You know, your, one of your favorite tracks is just grab a handful and steer right. with the rear wheel. Here, you kind of two-wheel it in a little bit and, and pick up the, the throttle a little bit slower than you do on, like, a cushion. Currently le- when I was watching uh, Ryan out there in practice, he, he looked like he was going slow and ended up being on – uh, right, right, because right. he was just keeping the wheels in line. He was really smooth all the way around the Some, racetrack. Sometimes it is key to go slow to go fast. Right. Absolutely. So we're just about set to go with our second round of practice for the Mission Super Twins. After that, we will have our three qualifying sessions for the Premier Classes. And while we do that, we're waiting. We'll be back on the racetrack at 4 o'clock, so we've got about 13 minutes left. And Kristen Beat did a great interview with Briar Bauman last at the last round down there at Port Royal up in Pennsylvania. Let's take a look back and, and hear this interview with Kristen Beat. Briar Bauman currently leading the points in the AFT Super Twins class. Briar, two wins this season. And what I find most interesting about, about this season in the Super Twins class, what has traditionally been a two-horse race is now expanded to a three-horse race. Brandon Robinson has thrown his name into the mix. What has that done for you and the, and the racing? Yeah, so racing, ah. Uh... We haven't done very much of it, so it's hard for me to kind of judge that, to be completely open and honest. Um, I'm kind of bummed that we've had a month since our last round just because it, it rained out uh, into coin. So the racing's been really good. There's only a few of us, but it's been meaningful and it's been hard for sure. Like, it's really tough right now because there's only so many guys in class. And then, you know, a bad night for one of the top dudes is like third at this point or a four. So it's it's difficult. Um but I just want to get more racing in. I, uh, we race this weekend, and then we have a couple more weeks off, and then we do a double header, and it seems like then we get into our chunk of our season. So once we get through all that stuff, then I'll be able to probably make a little bit better gesture or judgment on, on what's going on in the series. Of all the riders, you've been very vocal about not liking the breaks in between racing. What does that do for you? Like, is it hard to get home and get into a flow? For you as a rider, why do you like keeping the consistent race schedule on back-to-back weekends? Yeah, so... A lot of people <clears throat> bring up momentum, and I'm not a momentum guy, but I am a rhythm guy. Like, we, we have our trainer, Alden Baker, and we do the same stuff every week, and we want to go to the track the following weekend. So, and even more so, you have a good weekend, you want to keep it going, and then there's that momentum thing, but it's for me, rhythm. And it's it's just the fact that, like, I'm back at the track, I'm doing the things I know, and I'm with the people I know. When I uh, 
when I go home for a couple weeks, I get off program quick. Like, I'm not for training. I think it's dumb. I don't like any of that stuff, to be honest with you. I do like, like, casual bicycle rides, but I don't like going out and just grinding, you know? So it's hard to, to get the rhythm going and be, be cool with three or four weeks in a row of, of no racing and, and doing the same thing and having to stay, like, super strict and, and, you know, get away from or not get away from, you know, our normal everyday routine. So I just... I like racing, bottom line, like whether I'm doing well or not doing good. So I just want to be on the track with everyone and at the track with everyone. So just always been my mentality. I'm not going to let that change. Two championships down now. Um, you're an elite company winning back-to-back championships. But does the championship conversation ever kind of exhaust you? Where every time we talk to you, every time, you know, your name is brought up on social media, it seems as though the, the championship conversation is coming into play. Does that ever, like, tire you out? Like, how, how does that weigh on you? Yeah, no, honestly, it does, really. I uh, I came from being such a guy that just is going through the motions and, and just having a good time, and now all of a sudden, like, every single weekend, um, you're supposed to win. Like, it's it's at that point where that's kind of, at least that's the mentality and the vibe that I get. Uh, I remember I got third in the Dash for Cash at one of the races this year, and I come off, and Bronson goes, what happened? And I'm like, what do you mean what happened? That's, what all, that's all I had. That's third place. Like, that's what I got. And he was like, can you win the main? And I'm like, I don't know. So it does. Like you just the, – the standard gets raised so high, and it's, it's a lot every single week. And I feel like I've gotten better because I have gone through repeating it in 2020. And now, you know, I'm in, you know, in my third time – my third go-round of trying to win a championship. So it's a lot for sure, but it, it's obviously a good position to be in. When conversations come up about the championship – uh, I feel like there's still this this mentality, and maybe it's just me, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're trying to take championships away from Jared Meese. There's this still ownership of the championship, that maybe Jared Meese owns the championship, and you're taking one from him because he has won so many in a row. And uh, how do you respond to that? Like, how do you feel about that? And I, do you feel slighted at all when, when that is kind of the, the air of the conversation? No, I think it's pretty evident and pretty obvious how hard Jared works. Uh, we all see how bad he wants it. Um, I think that's what makes the last two for me so good is is when everyone when everyone thinks championship, they think Jared Meese. And obviously this year he blew out his ACL or whatever he did. Um, it kind of, you know, he's still not far off. He got four points at Atlanta. And, uh, and yeah, so it's not it's not a slight because everyone everyone knows how bad he wants it everyone knows how hard he works and maybe some of us don't work as hard yet we still got it so it's kind of like if you can beat him like you dang near can walk on water right because it's it's jared means like everyone's talking about how you still look at him that way even for me like i actually showed up to atlanta and when i heard about his acl i i can honestly credit him for me not riding that well because mentally i'm like dude he's he's top tier like Jared Meese is Jared Meese. He's right there with Scott Parker in my book, and uh, and he got hurt. Like, how is that? How is that possible? How is that a thing? That doesn't happen to, and I, you know, because I'm take, I'm trying to take championships away from him. I'm gonna get to the point where people look at it as me doing that to others. Uh, but it's still just my mentality. Like, he is still the dude. You know, I not, I don't work as hard as I do because because or not because of him. Like, he is he's his bar is so high that it keeps all of us kind of kind of going at it. You have to be at that level when you're racing with him. You do. I think that one of the things I do enjoy is that maybe I'm not quite at his level when we have beat him the last two years, but he does continue to just grind, and that's what the wear is. The championship isn't so much. I'm just at the point where it's like every week it's like Jared, and now we have Brandon. So it's like every single weekend you're you're just – there's always someone just at it. So When I look at this season so far – Jared's has his, had his mulligan. I think he's finished uh, 15th this season. Brandon with an 11th. They've all kind of had their had their mulligan um, in years past. Even while being able to secure a championship, you've had a mulligan. You haven't had that yet. Do you expect it? Do you kind of prepare for that when it comes? How do you how do you approach it or how do you handle it? Um, you've been the only rider who's been able to walk through the season um, pretty carelessly. Yeah, I mean, I think that last year you could almost call a little bit of a perfect season. I. Uh... I took seventh at Springfield, which was just me being a terrible mile guy. So I I think last year is as close as I'm going to get. And to be honest, like right now, a mulligan is a lot nicer than it was in 2019 when I would crash or I would break because you're either taking 18th or 19th where, I mean, J- Jared can show up to Atlanta and roll around and, and get four points. Like that's, that's so different than I'm sure like when he broke at Daytona in 2019 and I scored 25 and he got zero or maybe one. Like it's, it's a lot different, but – Ideally, the team works really, really hard. We don't want one. We don't want to have a bad weekend. We want to keep grinding at it, keep 
keep it top, but it's uh, it's motorcycle racing. I make mistakes eventually, and and the team can mess up. Things can go wrong. It's you know, it's not set in stone by any means. When you look at this team, um, you have such a cool crew behind you with the Zanatis, and uh, they work so hard. Your program has been truly very consistent this year, and that hasn't been the case in years past. What do you think attributes to that consistency? Um, honestly, we all just enjoy being here. Like Michelle's back; she uh, she took the year off last year and kind of did some stuff at home, and and she's back this year with Dave. And honestly, we just I think we've actually had more fun this year. Just. We got Bronson out of the pit, honestly. That was nice. We got him out of here. But, no, I mean, it's... Do you still offer him advice? Absolutely not. No. No, you're not. You're either in or you're out, dude. No. I t yeah, we try and help each other out as much as we can. We can. But, really, it's just the, the flow of the pit. Like, we, we enjoy the fact... We, I think the biggest thing is we don't take for granted our opportunity to be at the racetrack. That can, uh, that can be taken away so quickly that that's what keeps the flow and the momentum and the, and the enjoyment of being at the track like so high and so like everything we want so i'm really really fortunate to have a group of people that understand when i do have a bad weekend or a bad race or a bad session or whatever the case is they just kind of say hey what do we got to do to get better to to fix that or how do you how can you fix it you know so it's just uh it's the laid back environment that makes me love being a part of indian motorcycle so when i think of iconic riders and you're kind of uh, you're, you're entering that conversation. It's being thought of. You're leading the points in what could be your third consecutive championship. Um, I, there's certain words that stand out to me. Like when I think of Scotty Parker, I, I think of this fun, vivacious, very lively um, guy. When I think of Jared Meese, I think discipline. That's just the first thing that comes to mind. Um, and when I think of Briar Bellman, I'm kind of at a loss. I don't know what his word is yet. What do you want your word to be? What do you want people to remember uh, about your your season this year and about your legacy maybe? Honestly, like, not to be corny or anything, but just enjoy it. Like, uh, I've seen I've seen too many people not get to enjoy it their whole time, and I know how quickly it can be. Like I said, it can be taken away. Even Bronson, as simple as having a factory ride, to now he's working on his own bikes. Like, we're not going to get to do this forever. Every single time we go out there, there's a chance that we don't come back. And, like, as deep as that is, it's just how it is. Like, we, we take that risk and stuff. So I just enjoy it. Like, I love the fact that I get to come to the races every weekend, and maybe that's part of the reason I get so anxious that we have four weeks off between rounds. I just want to be here so and enjoy my, my racing with my friends. So, And welcome back to the Mission Foods New York Short Track presented by Mad Max Indian Motorcycle. The band Chasing Neon is performing underneath us out front. There's several vendors have stuff set up down there. Uh, concession stands are wide open. Ice cream down there. That's my favorite Cheese part. Cheeseburgers. My favorite part of it. I've already had one scoop of the mint ice cream. Nice. Yeah, it was uh, as soon as they opened up, I was right there. So, also the rookies of '79 down there, the American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. They have two shirts for this weekend. They got a blue one and a black one. Stop nice. by, check them out. Right, and, right. Uh, they're really cool. I really like them. And uh, I was over at the Charities Tent, and there's just all kinds of great memorabilia over there. I seen a. Uh, Number plate from Hank Scott that was off the Ron Wood Norton. Really? What yeah. number? Was that the number, number 14? 14? Okay. Yeah. All right. I have to go check that out. I like that. Did you know I was named after Gary Scott? Is that right? Yep. Yep. I didn't know that. Yeah, exactly. So, and I also want to give a shout out to John Pally. He was the winner of the last raffle at the Port Royal Speedway, and he gave it back to the charity. So, we're going to raffle that one off again this weekend. So, if you don't know about the Rookies of 79, they raise money to help riders to get hurt in our sport, which is a flat track racing. It can be American flat track vintage. It can be amateur riders. Correct. Uh, they helped out one of the amateur riders, Dominic DeMario, who got hurt at the amateur nationals. Helped him. They raised over four thousand dollars in one day to get him back to California safely and and without you know any discomfort for him for his in injury. So right. and, and it's all be you know there's some sponsors of course, but it's mostly from the fans, fans donating, the fans buying raffle tickets, the fans buying memorabilia. One hundred percent of those sales goes to injured racers, and so then we're we're blessed to have corporate sponsors that help with the gas with the transport and uh, getting to and from the racetracks and things like that so it's a it's a co whole flat track community involvement and their tent is set up right below the announcer's tower right next door to the american flat tracker clothing company stop by get the official shirt and uh, man it's just a, it's gonna be a great night of racing four classes running tonight and four classes running tomorrow we'll take out the bull tacos that are running tonight with the astros and tomorrow night will be the royal infield build train race program so uh, the ladies racing and building their own motorcycles will be racing tomorrow night so four classes both nights out here up next will be the mission super twins practice they have two rounds of practice the 37 bronson bauman the younger 
brother had the quickest time in, in practice. Put it on his brother, didn't he? Absolutely. Right there on that last lap with a 18.892, the fastest lap we have seen. After that, we'll have our AFT singles qualifying round one, AFT production twins qualifying round one, the Astro Invitational qualifying round number one, and then we'll bring out the Honda Talon that you and I got to ride in earlier today. That, uh, it was exciting. And there wasn't hardly any rubber down, so I think that thing's just going to get faster and faster. And you said the times were like 21, 22 seconds for us? Yeah, 21.7, I think, was your fast time. D did you hold your breath the whole time? No, I was actually I was leaning in. Yeah, I got yeah. a little lean. I had my foot up at <laughs> the corner, <laughs> and I was praying yeah. that Richie Morris was going to keep running four <laughs> wheels. Let's take a look at the Mission Super Twins points after eight rounds. Briar Bauman, your points leader, 164. You got Brandon Robinson sitting second with 139. Jared Meese with 133 in third. Vandekoy making his way up to fourth. And J.D. Beach, the Atlanta Super TT winner, is in fifth. Bikes are rolling. Mission Super Twins presented by SNS. This is their second round of practice. The one is Briar Bauman. 44 is Brandon Robinson. The nine, Jared Meese. 20, Jared Vandekoy. 95, J.D. Beach. 92 is Brandon Price. 37, Bronson Bauman. 67, Davis Fisher, 36, Colby Carlisle, the New York rider, 27, Buck Pearson, 43 is Wiss Foley, 69, Sammy Albert, good to have him back, and 72 is Larry Pegram, they call him the worm. Green flag is out, five lap practice session. You know, for a short track, they're hauling the mail. Yeah. They are really going quick, especially, you know, on this front straightaway, this arcing back straightaway. Jared Meese on the screen right there, the number nine. Briar Bauman scrubbing the yeah, front wheel, the front, the front end. end was, yeah, tough. yeah, pushing underneath, that kind of scrubbing it. Briar goes all the way up by the air fence in turn number one on the number one bike. Checking out the real estate. Vandekoy to the top spot. Jared Vandekoy, Captain Chaos, the 20 bike, 19.170. Bronson Bauman now up to second on the 37, 19.193. Jared Meese third, Briar Bauman is fourth, Carlisle is fifth. Okay, you know, they got rid of that hole going into one, they wheel yeah. packed it in. It looks like it's starting just to develop, just on the inside of the groove is the, uh, looks like the white flag coming out for the one bike of Briar Bauman, Robinson right behind him. Van Decoy, the 20 bike, still at the top spot, 19.1. Now Jared Meese goes to the top spot, right as I said that. <laughs> you saw it too, didn't you, Tommy? Yeah. 19.142. For Jared Meese, he's found some speed. Meese moves into the top spot. Van Coy second. Jared Meese on the number nine. Indy Motorcycle Progressive Insurance. Rogers Racing. SDI Racing. He's got a list of sponsors he always has. Breyer goes up to second right there on that last lap. 19.102. Actually, Jared Meese's brothers. lap was even faster the last lap. I already wrote down the time, and it goes even faster on that last lap. 19.092 for Jared Meese. Briar Bauman second, 19.102. Sammy Halbert looks like he's feeling he's no pain in his right foot. He's up there third, 19.146. Bronson Bauman fastest in the first round of practice. Fourth fast here in the second round, 19.161. Jared Vandekoy was quickest for a little while until the other riders found some speed. He drops back to fifth. That is it for the second round of practice for the premier class. It is the a a Mission Super Twins presented by SNS. Up next will be the AFT singles class. Singles class will be coming up next. There will be three groups. Taking a look at the point standings coming in. Maxwell and Dallas Daniels were tied just a few weeks ago. Now it's Maxwell in the lead. 151. 136 is Dallas Daniels sitting second. Mikey Rush is third with 122. So the Essence and Yamahas are second and third. Henry Wiles will uh, represent the Honda brand up there in fourth with 112. Morgan Mishler is fifth. Shana Texter Bauman back in sixth. Trevor Bruner, the other uh, American oh. Honda back there in the 83 points. Trent Lowe on the Suzuki. Cody Cop moved into the top ten after his second place finish. He's tied with Brandon Kitchen for ninth and tenth right there in the AFT singles class. It's the AFT singles class coming up. After that, we will have the AFT production twins. Then our Astro Invitational. This is qualifying. These times will be recorded. You want to get a good, quick lap in, Tommy. It's very important to start up front, especially now with only rows of four. And especially on a short track as well. Absolutely. So these times are important right now. It is qualifying for the AFT singles class. Singles for you new riders are 450. Single cylinder motorcycles is the reason for the word single. There's a look at the 18 and the one. First and second in the points. Maxwell from Kundu, Australia. He was going by the Kundu Kid for a little while, but I like Killer Whale. Killer Whale. Killer Whale. I like that better. All the way He's from been Australia. killing it. Yeah. Maybe. He's been sure. on fire, having his a career best season so far. There's a look back at the 17 of Henry Wiles, and there's a look at the 15 of Mikey Rush. 
out front on the racetrack, orange, blue, and red, the different colors of the AFC singles class. Maxwell, Dal Daniels, Mikey Rush, and there is the hammer, Henry Wilde, the 17 bike. Trevor Bruner was at the top spot. That didn't last very long. Here comes Dallas Daniels, goes to the top spot, 19.320. Dallas Daniels, the Estes and Yamaha, as we take a look through the pack. There's still Han Hammer and Wa Han Henry Wiles, the <laughs> hammer on the 17. Looks like he's trying a few different lines, Tommy. This is the time to do it. Right. You guys move it around, see what's going to happen. You got a second uh, chance at qualifying, so if something didn't work out uh, in the first one. White flag is out. We got a good battle between Maxwell and Dallas Daniels. They almost got together in turns one and two. Max will go up the racetrack. Dallas drops to the bottom of the racetrack. Here they come off of four. Coming to the checkered flag. Maybe a little practice for yeah. some passing right there. It's just practice, man. Don't they, don't they know? Yeah, no. That's how it important doesn't. every lap is, though. Dallas Daniels at the top spot right now with a 19.320. So the track's slowing down just a little bit from practice. Dallas Daniels a 19.320. Trevor Bruner second on the 21, 19.348. Morgan Mishler on the KTM. So a Yamaha. Honda KTM. KTM. You got Husk Varna back there in fourth, right there with Brandon Kitchen and Suzuki in fifth. The top five, wow, five that. different brands. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Kitchen Morgan. in the fourth spot. Low is in fifth. It's good that Morgan is uh, qualifying third. He's usually always working his way from the back to the front. So if. Uh, We'll see what happens tonight if you can maintain a good front row start. Again, Tommy, I mentioned this earlier, but uh, Dallas Daniels, in our, our, our two off weeks, he went to Norton, Kansas, raced in Kansas. This last weekend, he raced at Square Deal in New York, and then he raced at Medina TT in New York. Racing gets the big boys because they put them all together. Right. You know, I think you know some of the fast guys from each of the classes were racing head-to-head, -head, and uh, you know he's gaining some confidence, and it's, it's definitely showing for today. Yeah, those races are like mini nationals. Absolutely. So up next will be... The second group of practice, or I'm sorry, qualifying for the 51, Cole Zabala. 19 is James Outlook, the three wide going by the flag, man. 99, Kevin Stallings, 38, Tanner Dean. He's won here before in 2018. 54 is Michael Enderbitz and Hunter Bauer, the 144. Rue Evans on the 26. He's on the Justin Jones motorcycle now. 94 is Ryan Wells, 377, Ferran Cardus on the Wally Brown Suzuki. And the 55, Tyler Raggio, going for Raggio Racing and Sluggo Racing. Justin Jones uh, oh, came out of oh, man. Uh, close. Ott was up against the air fence. I thought we were going to have our uh, third third red flag, or second red flag. Man. Uh, I would say that Justin Jones came out of retirement there and uh, yeah, smoked him. He, uh, he looked Crusaders. good. Yeah, he looked good. But he put uh, put another rider back on the motorcycle. There's the 99 right there, Kevin Stallings, who was really fast. Now we got Ryan Wells. We haven't talked about him in a long time. He's got the quick time right now with the 94. He's a New York rider, 1-9. Point one six zero new new quick time for Ryan Wells Tanner Dean up there in second one nine point two four zero Dallas Daniels drops all the way to third so I didn't expect Group Two to be faster than Group Number One but that's what's happening right, right now and Ryan Wells is a past uh, singles champion absolutely he's now Stallings goes to the top spot the ninety nine one nine point one three five for the freak of nature Kevin Stallings how do you like that how do you like that nickname <laughs> when I went to uh, Rode a bull taco at Mid America, yep. and uh, it was the first time I ran into Kevin. But the announcer kept calling him Freak of Nature. Yep. I didn't know his name. They never said That's it. Kevin. They <laughs> always called him Freak of Nature. Yep. Well, maybe that is his nickname. Yeah. And his last lap was even faster for the 99. Kevin Stallings 18.984, wow. even quicker. That's even quicker than uh, the uh, practice session. So Stallings found some some time, some speed out here in this. Flipping over here in turn number one is there's a look at the 99 uh, Mission Food sponsor number 99 Kevin Stallings doing a little practice start on the back straightaway. He has a quick time right now 18.984. Ryan Wells is second, the New York rider 19.160. And it looks like Kristen Beat is down there and she's caught up with our points leader, the number 18 of Maxwell. Kristen.
All right, so Kristen having some issues with her microphone right now. We'll work on that and see if we can get back to her. She's down there with Maxwell. Up next to the group number three, the AFT singles class, 161, Casey Cisco, 135, Ezra Brusky, 157, Ian Wolf, 243 is Jared Lowe, 298 is a scratch. That's Trent Pickle. He is done for the night. 176 is Lane Hart, 110 is Damon Ream, brand new pro rider. 109, Billy Ross, and 156 of Jordan Jean. This is qualifying round number one for the AFT singles class. Billy Ross had uh, a good weekend as well. Absolutely. Yeah. He, I, I was up in uh, about nine days. No, maybe about 13. I lose track, Tommy. But he won a uh, TT, uh, a TT national up in uh, Wisconsin on Thursday. I thought he was going fast. Absolutely. So he's uh, he's a good rider. Just hasn't kind of come to his own. This is the, you know some stiff competition. You know. Yeah, this at, is not your. Your starter class or your feeder class. This is uh, they're stacked. Lots of talent here. Absolutely. There's a look at the uh, the uh, 243. He's a little brother, little big brother, I guess we can call him. Mm -hmm. He's a little bit bigger than Trent. Race and family. Yeah, absolutely. Their dad was Sam. He's number 48. There's 157 Ian Wolf. He hasn't quite come into his own just yet. He's one of the taller riders of the circuit. I think he's about six foot three or four. A little bit Ohio taller boy. than me. Yeah. You like that kid, don't you? Mm -hmm. I raced with him at uh, West Reserve, short track. Okay. He was 14. Yeah, and you <laughs> were a little older than that. <laughs> yeah. But he was fast. He still is. Kid, Billy Ross from Michigan, out there on the 109 bike. Damon Ream, his rookie pro race, is up to six on the number 110. Damon Ream, as the checkered flag comes out here for our singles first round of qualifying. The Waters racing team always does well here. Uh, Tanner Dean was riding for Dave Waters when uh, when he won. Yep. Uh, right for the Waters Auto Body team. Morgan Mister got second here in 2019. So yes. Waters has got a first and a second. Now they got a brand new pro rider. Just got his license this week. It's the number 110 of Damon Ream, currently six quick. I'm impressed. Absolutely. Up next, we'll switch our attention back to the twins. Class will be AFT Production Twins, presented by Vance and Hines. That'll be the next group coming out. Production Twins are production-based motorcycles, not bikes that were built for racing. They do a lot of modifications, get them set to go. The uh, number 65 is our points. So There's the G&G Racing Yamaha, Corey Texter. 679, Dalton Gautier. 49 is the California Kid, Chad Coast on the Harley Davidson. 62 is Dan Bromley on the Yamaha. 25, Ben Lau, the Holly Hot Rod, also on a Harley Davidson. 68 is Revan Ryan Barnes. He was quickest in practice. The 44, Cameron Smith. The 10 is Johnny Lewis. And the 64 is Danny Ed like Brownlee looks like he doesn't have a motorcycle. Yeah, he's standing there waiting. He's, standing like he's, <laughs> he's acting like he's sitting on his motorcycle. Uh -huh. Look at that. He's a, he's a funny guy. He is. He's got a great sense of humor. He keeps it light all the time. Absolutely. There's a look at some of the Vance and Hines guys. And bikes coming on track with or without Dan. If the bike's not there, we go without him. Who are you going to be watching watching for in the, in the production twins class today? I think Dalton's like Ryan and... Uh, you can never count out Corey Texter or Johnny Lewis, especially on a short track like this. I think Johnny's got a great job. Group one of two production twins, keeping an eye on the riders out there. See if anybody can drop it down a quick lap right now. Dalton Gautier, last time by, 19.521 for okay, the 79 is quickest so far. Take a look at our points leader, former champion of this class. Starting to put some rubber down on the racetrack. Should start to get faster. 65. Corey Texter is currently fourth in this qualifying session. Right now it's the 79. Dalton Gote, 19.502. Where's the 68? He's Barnes. He's back there in six. Now Chad Coes comes to the top spot. 19.315. That's faster than it was in practice. So just as I said, the track was slowing down a little bit. Now the rubber's going down. That's right. going to start speeding up. Chad Coes to the top spot. On the 49 bike, 19.315, his last lap. Dalton Gautier, second, Ben Loud, Dan Bromley. I didn't see him get out there, but he's up there for fourth. <laughs> is he riding his imaginary motorcycle, or did his bike show up? Running. He's running. <laughs> and if he can run that fast, he would be in the end. Chad goes to the top spot. White flag is up. One more lap to go in this practice, or this qualifying session. Cam Smith sitting in fifth. There it's a go. good run for Cam. Dude, he got on the podium at Oklahoma City. I thought it was going to be great. I don't think it's safe. Uh, he, yeah, he, he was a 
a little like shell shocked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chad Coast at the top spot, 1-9.315. That was faster than they were in practice. Dalton Gautier second on the 79. Ben Lau is third on the 25. Dan Bromley, the 62, got the bike there at the end. He only got uh, five laps in, so he missed the whole first lap, but Dan Bromley qualifies in the four spot. Cameron Smith is fifth. Corey Texter, sixth. Ryan Barnes was quickest in practice. Either made some changes or didn't make yeah. some changes. Now he's back in seventh. Everybody that was up in the, in the front in the first practice is... Uh, well, move backwards. Well, Tommy, how hard is it if you're already, if you're past time in practice, how hard is it not to change your motorcycle or to make changes to your bike? You know, I mean, yeah, it's that's, tough. It's a tough right too, because if it's working, why, why change it? Why change it? Exactly. Up next, practice group number two is qualifying round number one for the AFT Production Twins presented by Vance. Jeffrey Lowry. 161 Casey Cisco, the Cisco kid doing double duty today. 90s Brandon Newman from New York. 116 is Garrett Wilson. 22 is Mitch Harvick from Pennsylvania. 30 is Brock Schwarzenbacher. And the 133, David Wiggin on his first time out on a twin. Got himself a Harley Davidson next G750. From Sammy O racing Kawasaki. Again, throttle control. We talked about it earlier, but you can definitely see it right there. You cannot just grab a handful because you'll just light that rear, rear tire up, won't you? Yeah, and once it steps out, then you're, you're losing time. A lot of wheel spin. So you don't want to do that. You be nice and smooth with the throttle. Be nice and... Oh, oh. Lowry hits that little yeah. hole, goes up the racetrack, get it slowed down. Oh, barely. Barely misses the air fence down there in turn one, too. That's from hitting that little hole with him. his foot, didn't he? Was yeah. it his foot or his yeah, tires? Yeah, hit it with his foot. It stood him up. On the podcast, I had him on off the group. He talked about he's been riding his Kawasaki. He had a lot of mechanical issues. Switched on over to the Jeffries Yamaha. It's been having a good run at it. Here's a look at the replay. Watch out for the air fence. It comes up quick. And he just about touches it, but doesn't quite touch it right there, man. I don't think you get much closer than that. I just hold his breath. White flag is out. Group number two. Round one of qualifying. That, that one hole is catching him every time. Going in turn one, you got to. When you're out trail, yeah, you don't trail fix, riding, right. you look at a tree, you're going to hit that tree. Target fixation. Yeah. There's the 161, the Cisco kid, Casey Cisco on the Churchilla bike. And Bob Berry motorcycle checker flag is out. Chad Coe. Our spot after having a couple of bad laps in a row as the checkered flag flies. Harvard up the same. Seventh was the quickest bike on the racetrack was the 22 of Mitch Harvitt. So the bike stopping on the back straight. We're doing a little practice start. The 90 bike is one of the riders from New York that's racing with us. That's Brandon Newman. That's a good time for Mitch. Yeah, actually, I, that, very good time. Up yeah. there, seventh, 19.687. So only three tenths off the leader's time. Up next will be the Astro Invitational. This will be their qualifying session. Again, you guys, you know these riders a little bit more than I do, but uh, some of these guys you raced against back in your day. Oh, for sure. Charlie Roberts uh, from Novice, junior expert. Lance Jones, Jackie Mitchell. I heard Jackie was really fast back in the day. Jackie was smooth, just smooth. So was Lance. Lance was the man to beat today, but he was third so far in practice. Does that mean anything? No, I think he'll, I, you'll watch. We'll see. I think he'll be up there this time. The riders coming out in the Astro Invitational. 23 is Lance Jones. 32 is Jackie Mitchell. 42 is Henry Landry. 64, Charlie Roberts. 74, Eric DeWitt. 88, Roger Durkee. 89 is Kevin Barnes in the 101. Pete DeSantis from Solvay, New York. This is their qualifying round one for, for the Boltacos. They get two rounds of qualifying, just like the other classes. See, Jackie, we always called him the king. Mitchell. And, really? Uh, yeah. I'm still, oh, watch out, Pop Lance, Pop. Yeah. Lance Jones goes up there. So why, why are they having so much trouble down here in turns number one? I think, you know, the back straightaways and arcing, it's already setting you up for the corner. It's a drastic hard left-hander going into one. Is right. that it? Yeah, if you don't dive in there and you stay up a little bit wide, it'll it'll take you right out to the to the air fence. Okay. Charlie Roberts, 20.197 as the quick lap so far. Henry Landry. Landry. Was second. Now Barnes moves into second on the 89. Revan Kevin Barnes on the 89 moves up to second, 20.265. She's qualifying. Now these guys are a little slower than they were in their practice. Just a little bit. Yeah. 
20.197. Charlie Roberts, quick time in practice. Charlie Roberts was a 19.831. So you're right, just a little bit off of what they were in practice. Romance is back up to second. Romance. He likes being called Pop Pop, not Romance. Is that right? Romance was his name back when he was a kid. Was a kid. Yeah. White flag is out. You see a little bit of a bump right there across the track flag. There's the 23. He's got his Woody Kyle racing leathers on. He goes up the racetrack and get down here one and two. I have to use a little bit more compression loose. What do you think? I think the more you can keep your momentum up, you got enough. It's too easy to pull that compression release, but it just really slows you down. Man, a lot of, a lot of those guys use that instead of the brakes. So you can hear them when they let up. The... Yeah. Checker flag is out. Charlie oh. Roberts. Oh, the 42 oh. goes to the top spot. 74 almost got ran into. It. It was me. <laughs> some rides we already had our ride it's very cool that the has the dunlop rubber on the talons so yep. you can put some more rubber down it puts more rubber on the racetrack trying to widen the groove a little bit i'd like to see what uh, richie morris's times are in that talon we should put the uh, transponder on him and see what yeah, yeah see exactly. where he's going yep has a 1000 cc doesn't don't, don't see him lined up to come out but he's scheduled on our list to come out next after that we will have uh looks like we'll have the uh, Mission Super Twins qualifying round one is coming up at about 4.45. After that, AFT singles qualifying round two, production twins qualifying round two, the Astro Invitational qualifying round number two, then our Mission Super Twins qualifying round two. Opening ceremony is 6 o'clock today. We're on Eastern Time Zone for you folks tuning in worldwide. I've got some friends over in Brazil, so they're going to watch tonight. Nice. Yeah, they're checking it out over there. Uh, also, after that, after opening ceremonies, we'll have our Mission Super Twins semifinals one and two, AFT Production Twins semifinals one and two, AFT Singles semis one and two. The Astro Invitational Main Event right around 7:15 tonight. Mission Super Twins Mission Challenge will be at 7:25. Then we have a scheduled intermission break. That intermission will be at 7:35 until about 8:30 or so, roughly about that time. And then we'll have our three main events after that. So it's a big night of racing. We're going to do it again all tomorrow. We're doing a fans walk? No fan walk today. No, new, fan. no COVID protocol, so uh, uh, no, yes. no fan walk this weekend. There's the Honda Talent giving the uh, VIPs uh, an experience out there. They, they've got paddle shifters on that thing, 1,000 cc side by side. It's quick. We got to go out there for a couple laps earlier today. I got to ride in the front seat. We had a radio communication between the, the driver and our passengers and they're getting a few laps in. And their times weren't too far off of what we had earlier today. Looks like he might be just getting up to speed. It takes him a, a, a lap or two to get up to full song out there. That's the Honda Talon, one of the most anticipated side-by-sides to ever come out. 1,000 cc. I like the paddle shifter on there. Again, like Tommy said, they got the Dunlop rubber on the uh, on the Honda Talon to uh, help put some more rubber down onto the racetrack. So that's what's going on. Unofficial 22.4. Unofficially, on your unofficial stopwatch, yeah. twenty-two point four, just about two seconds off of the uh, qualifying time of the Boltacos. I'm just saying, it's got four wheels to put down there too, though. Let's see. The Honda Talon out there getting a couple of laps in. Very out consistent. Yeah. Twenty-two four, twenty-two four five. Was he shifting when when he was out yeah. there with oh, you? Yeah. 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 Little paddle shifters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hitting a rev limiter. Yeah. Had the GoPro camera on there for us and stuff. It was a lot of fun. I had a good time out there. Chris Carter did, too. I, I couldn't tell whether he was crying or, or he was laughing he, the whole he time. He wasn't stopping making noise. <laughs> I, I give you that. It's good to see him out here. So the Honda Talon is out there right now. Earlier, Tommy Doom and I got to ride it, and Chris Carter did. But last at the last round... Uh, Ricky Rackman got to ride it. Ricky is roaming around here somewhere. Ricky, can you hear me? Maybe he can't. Well, he, you know, he's been to a lot of concerts. You know, he's a rock star. So can't maybe, hear maybe he can't hear me anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, Ricky got to ride in it and uh, had a good time. Just got a message from uh, my family's out there in Sturgis right now. They're all tuned in and watching out there in Sturgis. We're going to a little track maintenance out here. When we come back, it'll be time for the... First round of qualifying, Mission Super Twins from New York. We'll be back soon.
You don't take greatness for granted, and neither should your gear. We are Torch Eyewear, and we design sunglasses for protection, performance, and chasing your passion. For more information, visit our website at torcheyewear.com and click on our free home try-on program. Honda's all-new Talon 1000 X4, the official sports side-by-side -side of American flat track, and the same vehicle driven during intermissions to condition the track. Featuring a high-tech six-speed automatic dual-clutch transmission, quick-revving 1,000cc twin-cylinder engine, Fox suspension, intelligent four-wheel drive, and stadium seating for up to four. The Talons are now available at your local Honda Power Sports dealer. Cometic Gasket is the official gasket of Progressive American Flat Track. For decades, Progressive American Flat Track champions have depended on Cometic to seal their engines. Cometic gaskets are the professional standard for racers who demand the very best. For more information, log on to Cometic.com. Cometic Gasket, sealing championship since 1989. Falcon Tires is proud to be the official light truck tire of Progressive American Flat Track. Choosing the right tire for your truck or SUV is critical. And Falcon has you covered offering highway terrains to all terrains through torture-tested mud terrains. For more information on Falcon's full line of Wild Peak products, please visit us at www.falcontire.com. Kicker Performance Audio is the official sound system of American Flat Track. Kicker's fully stocked line of products includes speakers, amplifiers, and subwoofers for your car and truck stereo systems, as well as those for your boat, side-by-side, -side, and touring motorcycle. Kicker also makes Bluetooth outdoor speakers, over-ear headphones, and earbuds to pair with your favorite mobile device. To learn more or find a dealer, visit Kicker.com. SNS Cycle was born from a passion for racing and has spent over 60 years building high performance for the power sports market. All the while, racing has remained at our core, from the Bonneville Salt Flats to championships in progressive American flat track. SNS is the go-to for high performance on and off the racetrack. Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs throughout America. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com forward slash progressive to see how much you could save. Hold on to your burritos because things are about to get too fast, too tasty. Mission Foods is a proud sponsor of the AFT Super Twins. Add Mission to your race-watching snacks for mouth-watering race day flavors. Mission Foods. Too fast, too tasty. On Saturday, August 21st, the Peoria TT is back. American Flat Track returns to Thunder Valley for another epic showdown at the Peoria TT. Man, this is awesome. You see how bad these guys want it. All the fun, all the action. This is the race you don't want to miss. The Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers Peoria TT, presented by Country Saloon on August 21st. Get your tickets now at AmericanFlatTrack.com. Hey, welcome back to New York. There's a look at Niagara Falls, not too far from you. Look how pretty that is, Tommy. Did you go over it in a barrel? Heck no. <laughs> how about a jet ski? Just launch it. I'd love to even just a helicopter to get that close. Man. Tommy Duma joining me up in the booth. I'm Scotty Dubler, the voice of American Flat Track. I to give a uh, shout out to all my family. I mentioned it as we're going to break, but a lot of my family's out at Sturgis, my family and friends, and they're all tuned in watching American Flat Track. And, uh, but that's your, originally from South Dakota, right? Originally I was born in Sioux Falls, yes. Sioux Falls, there you are. Yep, so yep. That's, uh... It's on the other side of the state from Sturgis, but I've spent many years at Sturgis. I've missed the last two, and uh, I'm sorry I'm missing it, but I had to come up here and uh, do some American Flat Track out here at the New York Short Track. It's good to be back at the Wheat Sport Speedway. It's a really fast short track, a D-shaped oval that looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, you get to put it in a lot deeper coming into three, then you got to bring it down so you don't hit the wall coming out of four. Number one's tucks in real tight and uh, then kind of starts that sweep all the way around. I think the action spot, the passing spot might be going into turn one. Actually, there might be passing going into three with your the, carry, the momentum you carry, but 
if you drift up the racetrack in turn one, it might open the door for your competitor. Right on, right on. So we'll have to wait and see. We got a lot going on out here. There's the band Chasing Neon is performing down below us. Also out there is American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. Right next door is the Rookies of 79. They've got all kinds of memorabilia. I'm gonna have to go check out that Hank Scott plate. I it's, might have to put that in my cool. collection. That is very cool. We've got it's a collection of number plates and a collection of helmets. Is that right? Yeah. I got, I got a helmet at the uh, Port Royal. I got uh, Ryan Orange's helmet after he got second at Lima. It came from the back of the pack, and that thing was pelted. You can't even read the Arai sticker on the helmet in the front. And uh, we kind of made a deal, and I got him a new helmet from Arai. Nice. <laughs> People you know. Right, and anyway, right, right. so I got to end up by keeping his helmet. So Very cool. That was pretty cool. So it added to the collection How many of you have? goodies. I would say I haven't counted, but I'd say right around 20. Nice. Uh, one of my prized possessions is Doug Wolfgang, Sprint Car Driver. Uh, I got hurt in 93, and he sent me one of his old helmets. Uh, and that's Doug Very Wolfgang cool. had the gold leaf star on the yeah. front. I, wrote, I wore that until he had Bell send me a helmet back then. I was riding for Bell, and because of him, I got some help from them. Uh, and then I got uh, one of Scotty Parker's wins from Lima. Very I've cool. got Chris Carr's last ever Grand National helmet, which uh, thanks to Chris for that. I know that was a very special helmet, uh, but I got Chris Carr's last ever Grand National helmet. That's pretty cool. Lots um, of memorable memories there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got a Corey Texter, Jared Vandekoy. I got Steve Moorhead. I got, I don't know, the list goes on. I'm going to have to, I don't have You don't have a Tommy Dumas one. I do not have one yet. <laughs> I was KRW back in the day. KRW, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's who you wrote for? The yeah. helmet? The helmet, yeah. yeah. Right on. I don't think I have a KRW helmet in my collection. Uh -oh. yeah, I'm just saying, Tommy. I'm just saying. Maybe you know somebody's got an extra helmet. I, I, or I take that watch <laughs> off your wrist. I mean, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. What some kind of deal we can do here, you know. So uh, the official jeweler of American Flat Track. Yeah, it's very cool to be able to do the rings this year. A little special. Uh, let everybody have their opportunity to custom design the ring the way that they want to want it. Like all sides, the top, and everything. Yeah, so every every part of the the ring. So you can we'll have different options that they can select if they want it a big number one with white diamonds or black diamonds, uh, or a, a colored gemstone underneath the one. Um, and then from there, if they don't like any of those options, we'll just sit there and, and, and design it and create whatever they want. That's awesome. So. Yeah. Your twin boys, do they, are they still helping in the jewelry business, or are they moved on? They they both work for uh, different companies, but they help us with the marketing effort. The commercial that you see in there, uh, okay. my one son, Corey, did the commercial. and So they, they help us with the marketing, but they're not officially at this particular point in their careers working right. for TDFJ. All right. That's cool. That's Tommy Duma, TDFJ, the official jeweler of American Flat Track. It's not all flat track jewelry. You can get any kind of jewelry. And if you want Tommy to be the official jeweler for you, give him a shout, tdfj.com, or give him a call, and he will talk to you and walk you through it. So earlier today, a lot of the riders were, you know, resting. We're inside the air conditioning. We're taking it easy. Johnny Lewis out there doing the slide school, the Royal Enfield rider. Let's take a look back at Johnny Lewis earlier today. Oh, so, so he's out here. This is actually in one of the garages. He's telling these riders how to turn. Like, have you gone through one of his slide schools? Tommy? I have not. I have not. Ricky Rackman did that. And I, I kind of talked him into it, but he's out there on those Royal Enfields. They're a little bit the bigger motorcycles, but you learn the basics. You learn right. how to put your left leg out. You know, look at him. He's, he's telling throttle control right now to pull out of the corners. You can see what he's, you know, what he's talking about right here. So they, they got the ride on the track today. That's a different track. It's 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 here. That, that is here, but it's not this particular okay. track, racetrack. It's a little bit shorter. It looks like it's ma maybe more of a go-kart track, but there's uh, back to our track here. But, yeah, he's doing slide schools all over the place, and, and you can do that if you want to. Uh, you know, Very cool. We tried to, uh, there, I think at one point in time we were talking about bringing him to, up to Salem, Ohio, at our racetrack at Western Reserve. I don't, I don't know whatever happened there, but I don't think it ever came to be. All right, so a little bit of track maintenance going on. 445 Eastern Mission Super Twins qualifying coming up next from New York. Hey, is that your stomach growling or the sound of thousands of CCs circling the track? Fuel up for race day with Mission Foods. Rev those taste buds with fast and easy to create recipes that are winner's circle delicious. Try some of our mouth-watering tacos to piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. Start those engines, because Mission has you covered from the green flag to the checkered flag. Now that's too fast, too tasty.
We're the Law Tigers, America's motorcycle lawyers. We understand the challenges riders face every day. As riders, we want to share the road and be seen by motorists. Remaining visible is critical to our safety and well-being. That's why we work tirelessly to promote motorcycle safety and awareness. We're proud to support our community that includes riders of all stripes. If you've been injured in a motorcycle accident, call 1-800-LAW-TIGERS or visit lawtigers.com. The Law Tigers, America's motorcycle lawyers. Motion Pro. We make innovative tools and products that help you maintain and repair motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs. Like the patented Profil Air Chuck, helping you manage tire air pressure on your motorcycle, ATV, or UTV. Easily adjust the Profil Air Chuck. Get past hot disc brake rotors with the pivoting angled head. Connect it with an airline. Or pair it with a Motion Pro digital tire pressure gauge. Reach for the Profil Air Chuck to manage your tires. Get yours at MotionPro.com or visit Power Sports stores nationwide. Cardo Systems is the official Bluetooth communicator for American Flat Track. Whether on the road or at the track, the Cardo Systems industry-leading mesh technology keeps you and your fellow riders connected. Racers like Sammy Halbert rely on Cardo for street riding entertainment, as well as a training tool at the track. All Cardo communicators are fully waterproof, dirt-proof, and feature sound by JBL. For more information, check out cardosystems.com and follow Cardo on all social media platforms at at Cardo Systems. Dunlop is proud to be the official tire of progressive American flat track. What we learn from racing is rolled into our production tires, such as the Dunlop K180, a street legal version of the aggressive DT3 flat track tire. With the K180, street riders can now have the authentic flat track tire experience. No other tire company has won more American motorcycle championships than Dunlop. Drag Specialties welcomes race fans. At Drag Specialties, our commitment to riding is a way of life. That's why we want to remind you that when you're ready to tackle maintenance or add performance and style to your ride, make your first stop a local dealer who stocks products from Drag Specialties. Drag Specialties. Enjoy the races. Memphis Shades brings you a whole new level of style when it comes to motorcycle windshields and fairings. The quality, style, and selection set these products apart from the pack. Memphis Shades designs and builds all windshields, fairings, and hardware in-house. Raw materials in, finished goods out. Made in Memphis. Style that works. In 2021, Royal Enfield celebrates 120 years of riding pure. The iconic brand will continue to pursue its efforts in the production twin class and the build train race program. After a successful first year campaign, Royal Enfield looks to improve on last year's effort. For more information, please visit RoyalEnfield.com. When I look at the new Chiefs, I mean, they echo the past completely, the single down tube frame. But what really grabs a hold of me is the engine that echoes the past of like the flathead side valve, original version. Indian is inviting us to feel the past, but when you get on it, you're like accelerating into the future. Maddie's Motorsports, the home of the Mad Max Indian motorcycle. Maddie'sMotorsports.com. Poland's Truck and Auto Centers specialize in heavy and light truck service and repair. Poland's is the only authorized service provider for the New York State Thruway for Western New York, providing 24-7 towing for heavy and light trucks as well as autos. Poland's is the official tow truck at the Weed Sports Speedway. On Saturday, August 21st, the Peoria TT is back. American Flat Track returns to Thunder Valley for another epic showdown at the Peoria TT. Man, this is awesome. You see how bad these guys want it. All the fun, all the action. This is the race you don't want to miss. The Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers Peoria TT, presented by Country Saloon on August 21st. Get your tickets now at AmericanFlatTrack.com. And welcome back to the New York Short Track Mission Foods New York Short Track presented by Mad Max Any More Circle. Sp pre speaking of Mad Max Any More Circle, they've got booths set up out front too. Did you stop by to check them out, Tommy? I did. I seen that. Great, great yeah, sure. They got all yeah. kinds of cool stuff out there on sale. They got a couple of little miniature little Indian suits. Did those? you see that hill climber? FCR 750. No. Yeah, they got it in a 
custom made uh, hill hill climbing frame. Really? Yeah, it looks sweet. Did you sit on it? Do you want to fire it up no, and take it for a ride? Not up a hill, <laughs> but I would like to take it for not a ride. Up <laughs> so you're not a hill climber? I'm not a hill climber. I did I did hill climbing way back in the day though. Oh, you've done everything. I never did that. I never did a hill climb. I I watched my dad do it a few times. My my grandpa's hill climbed, my uncle Joe hill climb. We actually even went out to the Widowmaker out there in Utah. Really? Yeah. Nice. I, I, as a kid, I couldn't even climb all the way up that thing. Yeah. It was nuts. The, the band's playing down below us. I can hear I can hear and feel the, the floor moving. Right. Chasing Neon travels the circuit with us this year, and the lead singer will sing the national anthem a little bit later on. I'm Scotty Dubler up here in the booth with Tommy Duma, TDFJ.com, the official jeweler of American Flat Track, and part-time brought a you know, uh, color commentator. Oh, uh, when, when did this start, Tommy? I mean, you, you looking for my job, or no, what are you trying no, to do? You, you are a professional. I am an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's great, though, with, yeah. with your experience, and, and you know a lot of these riders. You are the official jeweler, but you also are friends with a lot of the riders in the pit area. They all respect you so much. Yeah, it's it's just neat to be back, and uh, it's just like one big family. You know, like when you have a friend that you've been with and but you haven't talked to for years and then you guys get back together and mm -hmm. it's like you never never left and so that's kind of you know the, the whole paddock when i meet somebody new to to an old friend so yeah. very cool awesome you got the same same thing in common uh the flat track community it's it is a big family you know it it's, it's kind of like the traveling road show we got our own chaplain we got our own jeweler you know we got a bunch of parts that all fit together right, right on All right, we got a lot going on down here. We'll be back on the racetrack at 445, but Kristen Beat actually caught up with Kenny Tolbert, and Kenny was just announced that he's going into the AMA Hall of Fame. Let's take a Very listen. Very cool. Kenny Tolbert has been announced as one of the newest inductees into the AMA Hall of Fame. And Kenny, just from everyone at AFT, first of all, congratulations. Uh, what was your response when you got the call? I just thought it was a big joke, actually. I didn't really know. And then I didn't think much about it until actually it really happens. And then it's like, well, it is kind of cool, I guess. And it just goes to show, I mean, all these years of hard work and grind and everything that you do. And I don't know. It's cool. I'm pretty excited about it now. At first, I really wasn't, but now I am. So it's all good. Well, Kenny, to look back on a career of impactful service, you don't get into the Hall of Fame by floating uh, around American Flat Track. You get into the Hall of Fame by hard work, by success. The championships, not only that you've won for Jared Meese, but your own program in the past has merited you a, a career and a lifetime of impactful service in Flat Track. To look back on that and know that you'll forever be in the Hall of Fame and, and your family uh, will be able to look at that and acknowledge that as well. I mean, how does that resonate with you? <laughs> it goes all the way to the core. It actually feels pretty dang good now. So, like I said, at first it wasn't that big of a deal, but I guess it means a lot. And I've been getting a lot of pings from a lot of people and stuff, and congrats on this and that. And it's kind of starting to set in now, and it's a pretty cool feeling, and I think I like it a lot. You're going to be uh, among the likes uh, of the greats in the American Motorcyclists Association. And to be to be there is huge. Um, what what does that that mean for you? I mean, and who are who are you most excited to be inducted with? I would probably say as a tuner, Bill Warner. He made me work my ass off. I chased <laughs> that guy for a long time trying to catch up, but I just never got it done. And dead gummit, he uh, was the highlight of my career. I chased that guy for a long time. We were teammates for years, and uh, and it was a great thing. And someone that I look up to fiercely. He's a great competitor, and his uh, records are nothing short of spectacular. So do you have a tux at home to wear for the ceremony, or do we have to dress you up? Do we need to go shopping, Kenny? I think so, because right now I'm looking at my Lucky Devil thong and my cowboy boots, so. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, well, from everyone in the paddock, I know they're all super excited for you. Congratulations to the American Flat Track Series, and of course, uh, we'll be covering the induction as well, and uh, congratulations, Kenny. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Best of luck this weekend, too. Amazing right there. That's that's a well-deserved man going in the AMA Hall of Fame. For sure. He, he works hard. I remember traveling back in the day when uh, Kenny was uh, tuning for uh, Terry Pooby. Wow. We did I, some road I trips looked, together. I looked at my notes. At, at what he's told me is he has 121 American Flat Track Premier Class wins as a tuner. That's incredible. I know he, he's helped out Chris Carr. He got a win uh, or two wins with Willie McCoy, and the rest came with Jared Meese. So he's up to 121. The only one that's ahead of him, Bill Warner. That's right, the legend Bill Warner. So they're just calling him up. We're up here in race control right next to us up here. Got Chad and the gang having some fun up here. 
and uh, we're up here with them. Tommy Doom is up here. After uh, opening ceremonies, around about opening ceremonies time, we'll bring the bullet. Brad Baker will be up here right now. He's down there helping the uh, the factory Indian team out. Consulting and uh, rider coach. And yep, yep. He helps another out. set of eyes. And he's also kind of helping out Ferran Cardus, too, the Spanish flat track champion. He had, uh, they started that relationship during the Super Prestigio days, going over to uh, Spain and racing with the best flat trackers in the world. And Ferran and Brad hit it off, and they're really good friends. It's cool to have a little international flair with uh, Maxwell from Australia and Ferran from Spain. It's, uh, it's neat. We had two Canadians. We have one Canadian right. still racing with us. Is uh, Hunter Bauer? Uh, Trent Pickle is done for the day. I'm not sure that they said they might uh, take him to the hospital just to get him checked out. Possible concussion, but uh, okay. just checking him out right now. So he's okay, but he is done for the day. The 298 of Sweet Heat, Trent Pickle. The bikes are rolling on the racetrack. This is qualifying round one for the Mission Super Twins, presented by SNS. Tracks looks a little bit wetter right yeah. now, Tommy. I think they're going to take it a little bit slower. Qualifying round number one for the Mission Super Twins presented by SNS. Right now it's Vandekoy at the top spot, 19.359. Maybe he's the first one to get up to speed right now. There's the nine, the jammer Jared Meese onto the front straightaway. Pulling the front wheel. Tommy, it's been said a, ma a bike on one wheel is faster than a bike on two wheels. I think they're just trying to get the traction to the rear wheel. Sometimes the front wheel comes up. Right, you'll notice as soon as they come off the corner that they slide back to the, the back of the seat to put as much weight on the back end to get as much traction as they can. And sometimes it lightens the front end up and it comes up. So not necessarily pulling a wheelie on no. purpose, but trying to get that traction on that rear tire. That's your, the, the driving tire that drives you off the corners. Robinson to the top spot, 18.951. We haven't been in the 18 second range since our first round of practice. Meese up there to second, 19.006. Breyer goes down to third, 19.056. The worm was in fifth. There's the revolver. Brandon Robinson, he's not sliding very far back on his seat, but you can see him right there slides all, all the way up, up onto tank. the gas tank going into turn one. That puts the weight and the traction on the front tire. Correct. So you can, this type of racetrack, you're, you're not steering with the rear end, you're steering with the front checkered flag is out so it's going to be robinson mr mission challenge taking the top spot here and this is their first round of qualifying with a 18.951 the only bike in the 18 second range out here in this first round of qualifying robinson at the top spot number 44 jared meese number nine is second briar bauman is third on the one jared vanicoy fourth and larry pegram back there in fifth all right uh, ohio boy he's almost 50 almost He's still doing I'm it. I'm just going to throw that out there. Just, just a little bit of an almost. So that was our first round of qualifying for the Premier Class Mission Super Twins presented by SNS Cycles. Up next will be the AFT Singles. Their second and final round of qualifying is up next. So it looks like everybody's getting two rounds of qualifying. The Mission Super Twins got two rounds of practice. Everybody else just gets one round of practice. So the singles will be coming out. Your points leader will lead them out. It's the 18, the factory Red Bull KTM, the 18 of Max Well. The one is Dallas Daniels, 15, Mikey Rush, 17, Henry Wiles, 13, Morgan Mishler, 52, Shana Texter Bauman, 21, Trevor Bruner, 48, Trent Lowe, the 143, it's Hot Rod Cody Kopp, and the 105, Brandon Kitchen. Kitchen on the 105, Husk Varn as the bikes pull onto the racetrack. Here we go. Second round of qualifying for the AFT singles. What you eyeballing up there, Tommy? I just watched Max. He pulled back and let a bunch of guys go by. Maybe he's just wanting to check out and see what everybody else is doing. Check out the line. Sometimes you don't want to give away your favorite line out there either. You know, I think they're all right. racing for the same spot, but maybe he just wants to go back there and see where his competition stacks up. Dallas Daniels drops to the bottom of the racetrack and turns one and two, trying a completely different line, but goes up the racetrack on the back straightaway. Here comes Wiles sneaking a peek on the inside. There's the 15, though, Mikey Rush. One of the more experienced riders in this class, the 17 of Wiles. Dallas Daniels up the inside on the front straightaway, gets by Wiles, going off into turn number one on the number one bike. Your 2020 AFT singles champion. Nobody has won back-to-back -back championships in this class since class, this, right. in the AFT singles class started a few years back. Dallas has an opportunity to do that for sure. He's going in really low, going into one, lower than anybody else. I think part of the reason is you have to be 18 to be on, on a, a, a super twin, you know, on a yeah. twin. He's only 17. 
Uh, so I think that's why they kind of kept him in this class. And, of course, to try to win another championship for the Essence and Yamaha boys. Right on. Look at Wiles showing some speed, trying to come right back on Dallas. Gets by Dallas. Now he goes after Rush. Morgan Mitchell, though, has the quick time. The 13 bike, 19.283. So well, Stallings is still quicker. Dallas Daniels sneaking a peek down low. Here comes Wiles up the inside. Look That's at three, Dallas right. way down low, but he drifts up the racetrack. That's part of the problem, carrying that momentum down that back straightaway. And the checkered flag comes out. That's a little preview of what we're going to see tonight. Five. Throw a blanket over him. Wow. That was cool. Shane Texture up to the fifth. The 13, Morgan Mishler has the top spot so far in this second round. Fastest time, though, so far qualifying was from the first round of this next group coming out. The 99 of Kevin Stallings. Sounds like somebody's knocking at the door, and they don't sound like they're too happy. <laughs> Up next, group number two, AFT singles, 51, Cole Zabala, 19, James Ott, 99 is Kevin Stallings, 38 is Tanner Dean. He's a former winner at the New York Short Track. 54 is Michael Enderbitson, 124, Hunter Bauer, 26, Aiden Rusevens. He's on the Justin Jones Honda. 94, Ryan Wells was fast out there earlier as well. The 377, Ferran Carduz from Spain, and the 55, Tyler Reggio. So... Kevin Clark in the building. Good to see you, Kevin. Former flag man of the American Plat Track Series. That is who was being loud outside. Yep, everybody wanted to give a shout-out to Kevin. Here we go. Group number two, AFT singles on the racetrack. Zabala again missed Ducoin. Everybody missed DeCoin. It rained out. Right. He missed Port Royal, but he was scheduled to miss DeCoin. Or he's going to try to ride DeCoin. Then he's going to have surgery on his thumb, so he ended up only missing one round. Uh, but the 51 as a motocross incident, uh, something to do with his thumb on his left hand was his right. It was his right hand, wasn't it, Tom? Yeah, right hand. Yeah, the throttle hand, the most important one. So we'll see if Kevin can uh, back up his fast time. 99. Kevin Stallings was quickest in that first round with a 18.894. Tanner Dean up to third on the 38 bike. The Dean machine. He's won here before. He was riding the water auto body team. Now he's on the first impressions race team. There's a look at Tanner Dean with 38. I love those blue, blue wheels, yeah. man, on that on those first impression on this. They're good looking. Jeffrey Lowry wheels? I don't know about no. that. I, I wouldn't be surprised, though, but they're beautiful looking. I like the color of the blue. They're anodized. Uh, there's the 51 of Zabala. 99 up to second. Here comes Stallings. It's Now it's the 94 in the lead. Ryan Wells from Attica, New York. Albion, New York. I'm sorry. Albion rider up to the lead. 19.190. Still faster. Stallings from the first round. How he's second in this one. 19.212. Mishler still third. Tanner Dean is out there. He's fourth. So, it looks like some of the quicker guys are in this second group, Tommy. Right on. Low just went up to uh, six fastest. Checkered flag is out. Enderbitson moves up to third right there on that last lap. Qualifying round two. Looks like right now it's going to be the 94 of Ryan Wells. 19.190. So the combined time, if you look at that, is still Stallings in the top spot with a 18.984. But this round number two, Ryan Wells from Albion, New York, has got to feel good to... Uh, Get a good qualifying time out here. This second round of qualifying for the singles class. Currently, your fast time in round number two. Well, there's one more group to go to wrap up qualifying for the AFT singles class. It'll be group number three. 161 is Casey Cisco. 135, Ezra Brusky. 157, Ian Wolf. 243 is Jared Lowe. 298 is a scratch for the rest of the day. Trent Pickle. Lane Hart's on the 176. Another new name for us. And then another new rider that turned pro this week is Damon Ream, the 110. Billy the Kid, Billy Ross on the 109, and Jordan Jean, the 156 from Midland, Michigan. Here they roll onto the track. This is it for qualifying for your AFT singles class. The time to beat is a 18.984 from that first round of qualifying. After this, we will have our production twins final round of qualifying. Opening ceremonies today at 6 p.m. Eastern. Our first main event scheduled to be at 7.15 Eastern time zone. Cisco Kid out there, the 161. His dad's actually out at Sturgis working the rally for Harley Davidson. Is that right? Yep. So uh, Very cool. he told me to kind of keep an eye on him. So, Is that right? Yeah. I, I don't know what I can do from up here <laughs> in the uh, tower. Keep an eye on him. That's yeah, I'll all. keep an eye on him. He's riding in two different classes today, be in the AFC singles class and the production twins class. The Cisco Kid started off the season in a van with his dad with one motorcycle. 
got to start somewhere, right, That's Tommy? That's it. you got to start someplace. <laughs> Back in the day, we were all in vans. Yeah. And now the sport is continuing to grow. Now they can show up in semis, just like Supercross. It's awesome. Back this in is Go ahead. No, go. go, go. I was going to say, the Cisco kid looking pretty strong out there, the 161. But right as I said, they drifts up the racetrack. There's the you can see the arcing back straight away right there in that last camera shot. You can see how it it never you never gets straightened out. Right. Rusky gets around the 161. Ezra Rusky the 135. Checkered flag is out for him. Rusky was kind of hung up in traffic a little bit. And uh -oh. He is 24. So he went down. We got a rider down underneath the air fence. He comes out from underneath the air fence. Kind of low That's sided. Rusky. Yeah, kind of high sided. Uh, Looks like his air his airbag Makes went off. You can see he's all bl blown up. But that was Brusky. After he takes the checkered flag, goes all the way up the racetrack. You can see it kind of takes your breath away. I have, I have not experienced Me that. Either. But uh, when that airbag goes off, it uh, you're all blown up. There is our medical doctor right there, you know, Johnny, on the spot. Here's a replay. This is after the checkered flag. Watch the leader after he takes the checkered flag, gets off into turn number one. He's up. Oh, oh, the f he cut his foot. Look at he's, he's on the right the side of the motorcycle. He, he does the right thing right there and lets go, but the bike goes straight into the air fence right before he did, and he ends up underneath the air fence. That oh, was man. crazy. It took him, it bounced him off of the motorcycle. Now they're going to have to swap out that uh, airbag over there. That air fence is over there on the outside of the high impact zone, so they have to swap one out. So it looks like he is up and okay. How about you fans that are here early? Put your hands together for the 135. Ezra Brusky going down hard into the air fence and. He's going to get a ride back to the pit area. Hopefully, he'll be able to keep racing. But uh, there it goes. Just buck, bucked him up and over. Right. Like the, now he's side saddling the, the thing, and then he does he the right thing. Go. Yeah. That's the, the right thing to do, though, right? I yeah, mean, for sure. You got it. How hard is it just wow. to let go of your motorcycle? And, going straight into the wall. There he goes right here. This is a high, the high camera view. You know, there's no front brake. He couldn't grab the front brake with your know, right, right hand. Oh. So, man. That's got to be the single greatest invention that we, with the... Uh, <sighs> The airbags and the front end is completely destroyed on that bike so i don't know if he's got a backup but it looks like the back end's locked up too that bike might be garbage but uh you know what the air fence did its job they're taking that one uh air fence out they'll have to put a new one in there they'll blow it up with the leaf blowers and we'll get right back to it but uh man that bike went hard in the air fence and you can see that front wheels almost push yeah. all the way back to the header pipe for sure yeah the front flat tire brusky's from milwaukee wisconsin it's one of ricky rackman's favorite riders because he changes his hairdo at every race. Different colors, different styles. I seen it was like blue or purple at the a at couple, Port Royal. Yeah, yeah, a couple different times. Now it's kind of a a bleached out blondish, whitish color. But uh, yeah, they've, he's already been uh, taken back to the pit area, so they're waiting for that motorcycle. I'm not sure if he has a backup bike, but I think that one's done for the day. Done. Yeah, and there goes the old air fence. They can. You know, in the off weeks or during the week, they can sometimes repair those and we can keep using them. But, you know, right now they'll put a whole other uh, section out there. And concrete behind it. I'm sure that bike uh, went right through that uh, air fence and right into the concrete. Oh, there's Steve Moorhead overseeing everything. And that bike is is a messed up. So we got a short break. We get back into it. We'll have this wrapping up our qualifying out here. Up next, Production Twins qualifying round number two. We'll be back to New York shortly. The way this racetrack has turned out, AJ, is incredible. They can run high, low, middle, anywhere they want. We talked to eight riders in contention for this right now. Helmet started racing in America and flat track, and we've been supporting it ever since. Arai, handcrafted with an obsessive dedication to rider protection. For more information, please visit our website, AraiAmericas.com. You own the job and everything that comes with it. The mornings that start too early, the nights that go too late, and every unbelievable thing in between. 
It's good to know you can rent whatever construction equipment you need from people who do whatever it takes. Visit us at catrentalstore.com. Mobile View has been providing state-of-the-art LED video screens to sporting and special events throughout the U.S. and Canada since 1999. We use our vast experience of thousands of events to help guide the process of finding the right size screen to help make your event a memorable experience for your fans and sponsors. If you ever dreamed of blue skies, fresh air, and blue-green water, then look no further. If your idea of heaven on earth includes velvet golf courses, romantic evenings, and a setting sun, then you owe it to yourself to check out Southwest Florida's beautiful Punta Gorda and its neighboring areas. At MyDigitalListing.com, we've been making dreams come true for over a decade. Born from the desire to inspire and create adventure and community, Super 73 is an electric bike brand fusing motorcycle heritage and youth culture. Founded in 2016 and based in Southern California, Super 73 has led the charge in pioneering a new approach to help redefine the electric bicycle industry by emphasizing thoughtful design, responsible manufacturing techniques, and local community engagement. The brand continually strives to grow and expand into a true industry. Industry leader. Visit super73.com for more information. On Saturday, August 21st, the Peoria TT is back. American Flat Track returns to Thunder Valley for another epic showdown at the Peoria TT. Man, this is awesome. You see how bad these guys want it. All the fun, all the action. This is the race you don't want to miss. The Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers Peoria TT, presented by Country Saloon on August 21st. Get your tickets now at AmericanFlatTrack.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Mission Foods New York Short Track, presented by Mad Max Indian Motorcycle. We just got report up here from competition that the rider is okay, Ezra Bruski is okay, and he's been cleared to race. The doctor travels with us. They checked him out for the concussion protocol. He's okay. Look at that. Raymond Rizzo actually over there helping with the air fence. So it takes a, uh, a bunch of different people, and they all have different jobs, but they'll help out. So when they get that air fence blown up, we'll get back onto the racetrack. Up next will be AFT Production Twins qualifying round two. Followed by the Astro Invitational Qualifying Round 2. Then after that, Mission Super Twins Qualifying Round Number 2. We do have scheduled opening ceremonies at 6 p.m. Eastern. So uh, it looks like the air, airbag is just about all the way blown up. They put the progressive sponsor banner back on top, and then we'll get back out to it. Uh, Ready to go racing. A, a wild ride right there, but that airbag and his airbag suit, the combination of those things, he's able to walk away, and he's uh, been cleared to race the rest yeah, of the night. It's awesome. I wish I had airbag suits. Back when I was racing. They are required this year for all they three classes. Absolutely. I don't know why you wouldn't want to. If you're out there racing, why you wouldn't want one? Well, you know, like my dad said when I was racing, if you if you have a 10-set head, you wear a 10-set helmet. So you spend money on helmets. You spend money on Absolutely. airbag suits and, you know, wear some good gloves, good boots. Yeah, you don't want to cut the corners there when Absolutely it comes not. to. Cut, uh, cut corners. Cut corners on other things, you know. Exactly. Don't eat as much for dinner or something, you know. I got a built-in airbag right here. This is my fat belly. <laughs> I, mean, I got that too. All right. So Unfortunately, the, the air fence has been repaired and getting set to go with the uh, production twins. Final round of qualifying. Your fast time so far in production twins. This one's a surprise to me. The forty-nine, the Chad Coase. Uh, looks like he's found some speed right now. The time to beat in production twins one nine point three one five. Two groups to go here in production. Twins qualifying. 65, Corey Texer will lead him out. 79, Dalton Gautier. Another rider waiting for a motorcycle over there, it looked like. 49, Chad Coast. 62, is Dan Brownlee. 25, Ben Lau. 68, Ryan Barnes. 44, Cam Smith. The 10, Johnny Lewis. And the 64, Danny Eslick. Eslick is out there on the uh, Chad Coast. And look at these guys lollygagging, doing yeah. like Raleigh, uh, Brian Smith style. They're going to be almost down a full lap right now. They're way, way at the back. Again, I was talking about Andy Eslick. He's doing it for R&D Machine, McGrain Racing Roof Systems, Josh Decker, Jerry Leroy, Clockworks, Motion Pro, and Arise. We've got the sponsor list in here late. That's all right. Dalton Gautier gets by Corey Texter into turn number three. Now they're in turn number four. Go time won the last round at Port Royal. His home track actually was Corey Texter's home track. And there's a look to 68. Barnes, he's all over that motorcycle. He's easy to find out there in those bright green leathers. I like the gold rims out there, too. Those are kind of cool. Yeah, he's definitely easy to spot. Yep. Sure, got to be seen out there. Said Barnes, little bump, 
Ripping the throttle a couple times going into the corners, running the high line down here in three and four. We'll call that the Morgan Mitchell line. It's going above the bumps going in. I like it. Up the racetrack again, though, a little bit too high down here in turns one and two. That's going to cost him a little bit of time. Dan Bromley to the top spot, 19.504. Gote second, Ben Lau is third. Not quite as quick as Chad Coast's first round. 19.315 as the white flag comes out from Big P, our flag man. Corey Texter gets by Gautier down the back straightaway. He's looking for 44 Cam Smith. There's 62 Dan Bromley. Bromley's at the top spot. 19.504 for the tall drinker water from Pennsylvania. Dan the man. Look, he's run the very bottom of the racetrack down here in turns three and four. Call that the oh. Rich, Rich King line. Rich King, yeah. Oh, he didn't like that one. Oh, he's it looked like maybe the handlebars fell kind of back in his lap. He looked like he's trying to pull those up right there. The tight yeah, he up got, he got out of shape on. coming out of four there. So Dan Bromley, quickest in this second round, 19.504, but still the quick time for the overall is the 49, Chad Coast, 19.315. In this second round, it's Bromley, Gautier, Ben Lau, Corey Texter, and Chad Coast. Up next, final round of qualifying for the AFT Production Twins presented by Vance and Hines class. We'll take a look at the replay of the 62 of Dan Bromley getting a little squirrely down here in three and four. Gets it really crossed up. He hangs on to it. He's... He's bending down and looks like he looks down, looks like he tries to pull the handlebars like it was the handlebars, like he wasn't feeling something right. I don't yeah. know. That's weird. His back end started to come around and it kind of checked up. Yep, yep. Yep. Up next, second group. Final group coming up for the production twins. Looks like we might have bringing out a truck in the trailer, though, the uh, tow truck that, was, that took the bike back there, bringing him back into the infield section right now. We do have a lap from our drone. We'll check this out from up above. Check this out. This coming off of turn number four on the front straightaway. There's the flag stand for the car racetrack. And here comes the turn number one and two. That's cool. Very cool. Squaring off the corner. I'd shoot down low right here if you squared it up that, went up that high. Arcing back straightaway here at Weed Sports Speedway. Down the back chute into turn number three. I like that. That's a cool shot. Up next, group number two is on the racetrack. Final round of qualifying for the production twins. 42, Jeremiah Duffy. 223, Jeffrey Lowry. 161, Casey Cisco. Hello, Newman. Number 90, Brandon Newman from New York. 16, Garrett Wilson. 22 is Mitch Harbitt. 30, Brock Schwarzenbacher. And the 133, David Wiggin. Again, just bought this Harley Davidson first race for him. Jeffrey Lowry on a Dennis Jeffries backed Yamaha. Jeffrey is not keeping his wheels in line. He's just slider coming out of four. Cisco out in front, the 161 leading this group. Lowry's uh, twisting that throttle. Had, had some mechanical issues on his Kawasaki. He's been riding the Jeffrey's uh, Yamaha the last couple of rounds. Looks like he's feeling pretty comfortable on it. 223, last time by, 17th. Up the racetrack they go. That's uh, the 161 Casey Cisco. That's the motorcycle that was won in a uh, uh, drawing. Yeah, exactly. Jim Tortillo had the winning lottery ticket, I guess, if you want to call it that. That was uh, Jay Maloney's. Is that who that was? Possibly so. Newman goes up the racetrack on the 90 bike, opens up the door for the 16 and the 30. Schwarzenbacher on the 30, Wilson on the 16. Here comes Lowry looking at the oh. bottom. Going to run out of racetrack. That's the checkup as the checkered flag comes out. Dan Bromley's going to be fastest in qualifying in this second round. But overall, it's going to be the 49 of Chad Coast getting your quick time. 19.315. Dan Bromley, though, has got to feel pretty good. 19.504 quickest in this second round. Up next, we will have the Astro Invitational, their second final round of qualifying. This will give them their starting lineup for today's uh, event. So if you look at the air fence from the infield, from that one camera, it looks like there is a gap. From up here and going into turn one, there is not a gap. It, yeah, I noticed I, that. I got uh, people were sending us messages up here in the booth, but there's not a gap when you're going the flow of the racetrack. But from the other angle, it does look like there's a gap because there's a break in the wall right there. So it does. there's a look at it from right here. So uh, every spot is covered right there but here's a little bit of a gap but 
from this direction. Yeah, we can't see it. Right, exactly. Boltaco Astro Invitational final round of qualifying. The time to beat, 20.193. The 42 bike has the quick time. 101, Pete DeSantez. 42 is Henry Landry. 74 is Eddie DeWitt. I'm sorry, Eric DeWitt. 32 is Jackie Mitchell. 64, Charlie Roberts. 89, or, I'm sorry, I don't know what I said. <laughs> Ryan Barnes, but it's Kevin Barnes. It's Ryan's dad. And the 23 is Lance Jones. And the 88, Roger Durkee. Flags are waving. 64 looking up the inside. That's Charlie Roberts going to go by Lance Jones going to turn number one. Lance needs to break down a little bit. He's running in there a little bit too hot, I think. I think a little too high. You going to talk to him after this? <laughs> Straighten him pointers. out. Give him some pointers. It's easy to see Charlie. from up here. Yeah. 32. Jackie Mitchell, one of the Estenson Bull Tacos. Yeah, Pop Pop's just going a little bit too hot. Squaring it off. Using some body English right there. Charlie's yep. out front. One bike off the pace on the front straightway. It's the 99 of Roger Durkee. He pulls that thing into the infield. They keep on going. What would you say about Charlie? Back out in front. Fast time. Charlie Roberts, 20.454. Barnes up the second, 20.519. That rider down turn one. It might be. Is it Lance? I see green and black. We, we do have red flag is out. He's kind of trapped underneath the motorcycle right now. It's a little loud up here in the booth. Trying to get to our down riders as quickly as possible. He's kind of underneath the motorcycle right now. It's uh, the uh, 23 of Lance Jones. He's trying to get the motorcycle off of him right now. They'll get him checked out. It is the 23 of Lance Jones going down. Last couple laps that he was, you, you mentioned that he was Keep, kept drifting up. He's up and on his feet. Let's put our hands together for the 23 of Lance Jones. We'll take a look at the replay. He does get trapped underneath this motorcycle. He goes up the racetrack. There he's off of the racing groove and they just Ran low sided. Tape. And then they get, you can see his left foot is underneath that motorcycle. So hopefully he's uh, not too. Uh... Yeah, the track, is, it just gets dry up there. The water truck doesn't make it all the way up against the air fence. And when you get into that loose stuff, you, there's no way to get stopped. But, uh, yeah, he said definitely my left leg was trapped underneath that motorcycle. So that is Steve Moore. Okay. Yep. Talking it over up here in the booth. It's race control. Get to hear all the inside scoop beside us. See, I like that, yeah. Little, we were here, the secrets. They're trying to push. Start. Look at that. Steve Moore is going to try to bump start it. Oh, there it goes. There we go. We gotta turn it back around. They check the air fence out. Taking the leaf blower up there to fill it up. Charlie Roberts still at the top spot here in this second round of qualifying, but qualifying round one to 42. Uh, Henry Landry, I'm not familiar with Henry. Not at all. I know Lance Landry. Okay. So Jerry Landry used to be uh, the pastor. Wow. Uh, back in the day, like Ray Rizzo. He used okay. to travel and do, I didn't know do that. chapels uh, awesome. back in the 70s. Awesome. So. When they get going, they're going to have a green-white check. Looks like Lance is going to take it back to the pit area. He'll be done. He'll have to settle with his qualifying time from earlier. His quick time in this round was a 20.751. So green-white checkered up next. There's the 88 getting a little uh, push back to the pit area. 88, Roger Durkee having some mechanical issues. So looks like there's only three bikes, maybe four bikes are going to get going. Track's clear. They're going to send them on out. 64 trying to bump start his bike. Got it fired up. That's Dale Jones right there. Dale Jones used to race, number 10K from a, uh, Muscatine, Iowa. You know Dale Jones? I He's our tech official, right? Absolutely. Yep. Astros on the racetrack. This is their final round of qualifying. Time to beat from the first round, 20.193. It's the 42 bike. Had the quick time earlier. The noise you can hear when they let off the throttles going in the, uh, in the corners is the compression release. Helps slow them down. Green, white flag at the same time. That's Raymond Rizzo throwing the green and white. One more lap to go in this qualifying session for the Otaco Astro Invitational. Mission Super Twins are up next for their final round of qualifying. Check a flag is out right there for Charlie Roberts' 64. Barnes in second, Mitchell, Landry, and Jones. Wow. So I mentioned. 
Oklahoma. No, that's the other Jones. That's the other Jones. Landry Jones. <laughs> Ronnie Jones. I know, I know. We're getting, getting different messages from the truck over here. <laughs> so i got friends tuning in in Australia down there. It says, Scotty, our boy is loving your work this morning. It's 7 a.m. in Australia. Give him a shout-out. And uh, up here in the booth with me is Tommy Duma, TDFJ, the official jeweler. He is also helping us commentate. So it's cool that the little boys watch this on the iPad down in Australia. It's 7 a.m. in the morning. Thanks wow. for tuning in to American Flat Track. Last round of qualifying for your mission, Super Twins, presented by SNS Cycle. The time to beat, 18.951. It's the 44. Brandon Robinson, who has the quick time. Breyer gets into turn one really hot. Hit that little bit Tips of a bump, up. went up the racetrack. Ooh, JD Beach was all over the motorcycle coming off of turn number two. Breyer on the one bike. Jared Meese to the top spot, 19.607. Sammy Halbert right there, 19.614 on the 69. Good to see him He's back up back. there going fast. He was struggling a little bit at Port Royal. I think it was a little too soon with his right foot injury. There's the jammer, Jared Meese. Meese has the gold number nine on the number plates. He's easier to find than some of the other Indian guys. He's got that bright yellow on his helmet, on his boots. He also has yellow handlebars on there. So he's a little bit different to find out there on the racetrack. The white flag is out. One more lap to go. Still Jared Meese at the top spot, 19.607. Robinson back here in fourth in this round, 19.732. But his first round of qualifying time was faster, 18.951. So this is going to be it for the final round of qualifying out here tonight. Checkered flags out for the one bike. Ryer up there in third. Meese will hang on to the top spot here in this final round of ball on 19.607. 19.607 for Jared Meese. So that'll be good enough for the second round. So your fast time is the 44 bike of Brandon Robinson with the first round, 18.951. There's a look at Meese. Sammy Halbert pulling off the track, the 20 bike and the rest of them. So that is going to be it for all the qualifying action out here today at the New York Short Track. Opening ceremony, 6 o'clock Eastern time zone. So you got a little bit of a break right now. Good time to stretch your legs, grab yourself something to eat or drink. Stop by the souvenir stand, the American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. They've got two different New York Short Tracks on sale. they got a blue one and a black one on sale. Right next door is the Rookies of 79. Stop by and check out the charity booth that's right next door. And the Honda Talon coming back on. Tommy? We got to ride in earlier. Maybe we should do it again with more, more rubber, rubber on the racetrack. For sure. It's yeah. got to definitely be quicker. We had big smiles on our faces. <laughs> Honda Talon, one of the most anticipated side-by-sides to ever come out from Honda. They got paddle shifters on there. It's a 1,000 cc. These are super fast side-by-sides. We got a question coming in from the truck, the production truck down there. So some people that have rode in this thing last week at Port Royal, some people from the truck got to ride in it. And they want to know how different is the sensation riding in the side-by-side? -side? How different, Tommy, is it in, in the four-wheel Talon than it is on two wheels on a flat track bike? It seemed faster in the Talon. Did it really? It, yeah, it just, what, because, one, I wasn't in control. Right, <laughs> right. That's so, a big so there's a whole different element of anxiety or rush, adrenaline rush when, you know, you're relying and, on somebody else and you know he's got a little bit of set of handlebars in the passenger seat in the back seat i didn't ride in the back seat i didn't either i don't so know, I don't what's, know back what's back there, there. Yeah. but uh it's, it's a lot different but you get the you get the sense of how it is throwing it into the corners you can see him shifting their weight i know uh richie richie morris's hands were like he was just fighting the steering wheel like right. left and right like a sprint car driver yeah. does yeah yeah it, when we were out there it was uh had no rubber and we were doing a little drifting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I could definitely feel it. Like yeah. the first couple laps before he put any passengers on, that left rear was actually coming off the ground. Yes, I seen yeah. that. So uh, when I went out there, I went out there by myself. Then uh, I got to go again with my buddy Chris Carter that I do the podcast with off the groove. 
and uh, we got to check it out. And then you went out there by yourself. Right on. They just got into the 21 seconds this time. So really? They, yeah, they, so they, the more rubber's on right. the racetrack, and they're actually helping put more rubber down on the racetrack. The same rubber on their tires is the same rubber we have on the uh, flat track bikes. It's, uh, it's a great way to bring the track in and give uh, some people an, an opportunity to see and feel what it's like. The track is good to go. Looks like they're going to do some track maintenance. We do have opening ceremonies coming up at 6 p.m. Eastern time for you folks tuning in worldwide. I know i got friends down in Brazil. Got Just got messages from Australia. i got friends up in Canada taking a, a look at American Flat Track. Uh, again, opening ceremonies at 6 p.m. We do have the after opening ceremonies. We have two Super Twin Semis. We have two AFT Production Twin Semifinals. We have two AFT Single Semifinals. And then we'll have our first main event of the night. The Astro Invitational Main, followed by the Mission Super Twins Mission Challenge. Four laps, $5,000 to win. Then we'll have our scheduled intermission break, 7.30. Looks like 7.35 till 8.30. And then we'll come back with our three main events here tonight. It's a big night of racing. It's night number one, round number nine. Progressive American Flat Track. It's the Mission Foods New York Short Track presented by Mad Max Indian Motorcycle. The talent's going to put some more laps down. I think... Uh, I think he's checking it out a little bit lower line, maybe trying to help put some rubber down there, Tommy. What do you think? Yeah, he's, he's trying to go fat, give those people their money's worth. And it's free. So, again, the Honda Talon is getting a few laps in. I'm Scotty Dubler up here in the booth. It's Tommy Duma helping out. And the, the other member, the member of the, 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 the one that roams around the pits, that gets to talk to all the riders and have all the fun that bought ice cream for me earlier, Kristen Beats down there. Kristen, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing very well, Scotty. And how did you enjoy that ice cream, by the way? That's one of the many uh, parts of coming to Weed Sports Speedway that is so fun, is being able to not only check out concessions, but visit with the riders. Everything is in close proximity. This track is awesome. And for fans that may be just tuning in, uh, this track is unique in that it's kind of shaped like a D. When I talked to Dallas Daniels earlier in the week, he told me this track, despite being a short track, races more like a half mile. So Tommy... Uh, Scotty, can you guys kind of explain what that means? Because of the size of the track and the surface of the track, yes, it's going to be fast like a half mile. So it's, it's, it's fast, but it's a short track, but it's got a lot of speed. It's got a D-shaped back straightaway, carry a lot of momentum around the back straightaway and into turn number three. So it, it is a short track on the books, but it's a very fast short track. Right. Usually your, your short track is a quarter of a mile. And uh, more like a paper clip, if you will, uh, with this one having that really when you set up coming out of come going into turn one and from like the middle of turn two all the way coming out of four, it's one big sweeper. Mm -hmm. And so they get, like you say, keep a lot of momentum up. And you don't, you don't even hardly have time to pick your foot up. I mean, you, you got you to gotta try to get the traction on that rear wheel, and then you got to slide it off into turn number three. Right on. Super fast track. So we're going to take a break out here tonight. When we come back, 6 o'clock is opening ceremony, 6 o'clock Eastern. A few folks tuning in worldwide. Thanks to everybody for tuning in early today. After opening ceremonies, semifinals will be next. We'll be back to New York shortly. Hey, is that your stomach growling? Or the sound of thousands of cc's circling the track? Fuel up for race day with Mission Foods. Rev those taste buds with fast and easy to create recipes that are winner's circle delicious. Try some of our mouth-watering tacos to piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. Start those engines because Mission has you covered from the green flag to the checkered flag. Now that's too fast, too tasty. When I look at the new Chiefs, I mean, they echo the past completely. The single down tube frame, but what really grabs a hold of me is the engine that echoes the past of like the flathead side valve, original version. Indian is inviting us to feel the past, but when you get on it, you're like accelerating into the future. Maddie's Motorsports, the home of the Mad Max Indian motorcycle. Maddie'sMotorsports.com. Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs throughout America. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com forward slash progressive to see how much you could save. 
SNS Cycle was born from a passion for racing and has spent over 60 years building high performance for the power sports market. All the while, racing has remained at our core, from the Bonneville Salt Flats to championships in progressive American flat track. SNS is the go to for high performance on and off the racetrack. Wheeland designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights. White illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for various industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. SBS is your single source for brake parts and components. From pads to rotors, shoes, and other important parts covering motorcycles, scooters, motocross bikes, ATVs, and UTVs. We create the power to stop you so you can go ahead. Find the right parts for your bike at www.sbsbrakes.com. Dunlop is proud to be the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. What we learn from racing is rolled into our production tires, such as the Dunlop K180 a street-legal version of the aggressive DT3 flat-track tire. With the K180, street riders can now have the authentic flat-track tire experience. No other tire company has won more American motorcycle championships than Dunlop. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. Poland's Truck and Auto Centers specialize in heavy and light truck service and repair. Poland's is the only authorized service provider for the New York State Thruway for Western New York, providing 24-7 towing for heavy and light trucks as well as autos. Poland's is the official tow truck at the Weed Sports Speedway. The world's fastest mile is coming on September 4th and 5th. American Flat Track roars into the Springfield Mile for another epic race of the world's fastest dirt track racers. One of the best races you'll ever see. Meet the riders, witness the speed, experience the glory. The Memphis Shade Springfield Mile presented by Law Tigers doubleheader on September 4th and 5th. Get your tickets now at AmericanFlatTrack.com. Briar Bauman currently leading the points in the AFT Super Twins class. Briar, two wins this season. And what I find most interesting about, about this season in the Super Twins class, what has traditionally been a two-horse race is now expanded to a three-horse race. Brandon Robinson has thrown his name into the mix. What has that done for you and the and the racing? Yeah, so racing, uh, we haven't done very much of it, so it's hard for me to kind of judge that, to be completely open and honest. Um, I'm kind of bummed that we've had a month since our last round just because it, it rained out uh, into coins. So the racing's been really good. There's only a few of us, but it's been meaningful and it's been hard for sure. Like, it's really tough right now because there's only so many guys in the class and then, you know, a bad night for one of the top dudes is like third at this point or a fourth. So it's it's difficult. Um, but I just want to get more racing in. I uh, We race this weekend, and then we have a couple more weeks off, and then we do a double header, and it seems like then we get into our chunk of our season. So once we get through all that stuff, then I'll be able to probably make a little bit better gesture or judgment on, on what's going on in the series. Of all the riders, you've been very vocal about not liking the breaks in between racing. What does that do for you? Like, is it hard to get home and get into a flow? For you as a rider, why do you like keeping the consistent race schedule on back-to-back -back weekends? Yeah, so... A lot of people <clears throat> bring up momentum, and I'm not a momentum guy, but I am a rhythm guy. Like, we, we have our trainer, Alden Baker, and we do the same stuff every week, and we want to go to the track the following weekend. So, and even more so, you have a good weekend, you want to keep it going, and then there's that momentum thing, but it's for me, rhythm. And it's it's just the fact that, like, I'm back at the track, I'm doing the things I know, and I'm with the people I know. When I, uh, when I go home for a couple weeks, I get off program quick. Like, I'm not for training. I think it's dumb. I don't like any of that stuff, to be honest with you. I do like, like casual bicycle rides but i don't like going out and just grinding you know so it's hard to to get the rhythm going and be be cool with 
three or four weeks in a row of, of no racing and, and doing the same thing and having to stay like super strict and, and, you know, get away from, or not get away from, you know, our normal everyday routine. So I just, I like racing bottom line, like whether I'm doing well or not doing good. So I just want to be on the track with everyone and at the track with everyone. So just always been my mentality. I'm not gonna let that change. Two championships down now. Um, you're an elite company winning back-to-back -back championships. But does the championship conversation ever kind of exhaust you where every time we talk to you or every time, you know, your name is brought up on social media, it seems as though the, the championship conversation is coming into play. Does that ever, like, tire you out? Like, how, how does that weigh on you? Yeah. No, honestly, it does, really. I uh, I came from being such a guy that just is going through the motions and, and just having a good time. And now all of a sudden, like, every single weekend, um, you're supposed to win. Like, it's, it's at that point where that's kind of – at least – that's the mentality and the vibe that I get. Uh, I remember I got third in the dash for cash at one of the races this year, and I come off, and Bronson goes, what happened? And I'm like, what do you mean what happened? That's what all, that's all I had. That's third place. Like, that's what I got. And he was like, can you win the main? And I'm like, I don't know. So it does. Like, you just the, – the standard gets raised so high, and it's, it's a lot every single week. And I feel like I've gotten better because I have gone through repeating it in 2020, and now, you know, I'm in, you know, in my third time – or my third go-round of trying to win a championship. So – it's a lot for sure, but it, it's obviously a good position to be in. When conversations come up about the championship, uh, I feel like there's still this this mentality, and may, maybe it's just me, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're trying to take championships away from Jared Meese. There's this still ownership of the championship, that maybe Jared Meese owns a championship, and you're taking one from him because he has won so many in a row. And uh, how do you respond to that? Like, how do you feel about that? And I, do you feel slighted at all when, when that is kind of the, the air of the conversation? No, I think it's pretty evident and pretty obvious how hard Jared works. Uh, we all see how bad he wants it. Um, I think that's what makes the last two for me so good is is when everyone when everyone thinks championship, they think Jared Meese. And obviously this year he blew out his ACL or whatever he did. Um, it kind of, you know, he's still not far off. He got four points at Atlanta. And, uh, and yeah, so... It's not it's not a slight because everyone everyone knows how bad he wants it. Everyone knows how hard he works and maybe some of us don't work as hard yet we still got it. So it's kinda like if you can beat him, like you dang near can walk on water, right? Because it's it's Jared Meese, like everyone's talking about how you still look at him that way. Even for me. Like I actually showed up to Atlanta and when I heard about his ACL, I I can honestly credit him for me not riding that well because mentally I'm like, dude, he's he's top tier, like Jared Mees is Jared Mees. He's right there with Scott Parker in my book. And uh, and he got hurt. Like, how is that How is that possible? How is that a thing? That doesn't happen to, I, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to take championships away from him. I'm going to get to the point where people look at it as me doing that to others. Uh, but it's still just my mentality. Like, he is still the dude, you know. I, I, I don't work as hard as I do because, because, or not because of him. Like, he is, he's, his bar is so high that it keeps all of us kind of kind of going at it. You have to be at that level when you're racing with him. You do. I think that one of the things I do enjoy is that maybe I'm not quite at his level when we have beat him the last two years, but he does continue to just grind. And that's what the wear is. The championship isn't so much. I'm just at the point where it's like every week it's like Jared, and now we have Brandon. So it's like every single weekend you're you're just – there's always someone just at it. So When I look at this season so far – Jared's has his, had his mulligan. I think he's finished uh, 15th this season. Brandon with an 11th. They've all kind of had their had their mulligan um, in years past. Even while being able to secure a championship, you've had a mulligan. You haven't had that yet. Do you expect it? Do you kind of prepare for that when it comes? How do you how do you approach it or how do you handle it? Um, you've been the only rider who's been able to walk through the season um, pretty carelessly. Yeah, I mean, I think that last year you could almost call a little bit of a perfect season. I. Uh... I took seventh at Springfield, which was just me being a terrible mile guy. So I I think last year is as close as I'm going to get. And to be honest, like right now, a mulligan is a lot nicer than it was in 2019 when I would crash or I would break because you're either taking 18th or 19th where, I mean, J Jared can show up to Atlanta and roll around and, and get four points. Like that's, that's so different than I'm sure like when he broke at Daytona in 2019 and I scored 25 and he got zero or maybe one. Like it's, it's a lot different, but – Ideally, the team works really, really hard. We don't want one. We don't want to have a bad weekend. We want to keep grinding at it, keep keep it at the top. But it's uh, it's motorcycle racing. I make mistakes eventually, and and the team can mess up. Things can go wrong. It's you know, it's not set in stone by any means. 
when you look at this team, um, you have such a cool crew behind you with the Zanatis, and uh, they work so hard. Your program has been truly very consistent this year, and that hasn't been the case in years past. What do you think attributes to that consistency? Um, honestly, we all just enjoy being here. Like Michelle's back; she uh, she took the year off last year and kind of did some stuff at home, and and she's back this year with Dave. And honestly, we just I think we've actually had more fun this year. Just. We got Bronson out of the pit, honestly. That was nice. We got him out of here. But, no, I mean, it's... Do you still offer him advice? Absolutely not. No. No, you're not. You're either in or you're out, dude. No. I t yeah, we try and help each other out as much as we can. We can. But, really, it's just the, the flow of the pit. Like, we we enjoy the fact... We I think the biggest thing is we don't take for granted our opportunity to be at the racetrack. That can uh, that can be taken away so quickly that that's what keeps the flow and the momentum and the, and the enjoyment of being at the track like so high and so like everything we want so i'm really really fortunate to have a group of people that understand when i do have a bad weekend or a bad race or a bad session or whatever the case is they just kind of say hey what do we got to do to get better to to fix that or how do you how can you fix it you know so it's just uh it's the laid back environment that makes me love being a part of indian motorcycle so when i think of iconic riders and you're kind of uh, you're, you're entering that conversation. It's being thought of. You're leading the points in what could be your third consecutive championship. Um, I, there's certain words that stand out to me. Like when I think of Scotty Parker, I, I think of this fun, vivacious, very lively um, guy. When I think of Jared Mees, I think discipline. That's just the first thing that comes to mind. Um, and when I think of Briar Bellman, I'm kind of at a loss. I don't know what his word is yet. What do you want your word to be? What do you want people to remember uh, about your your season this year and about your legacy maybe? Honestly, like, not to be corny or anything, but just enjoy it. Like, uh, I've seen I've seen too many people not get to enjoy it their whole time, and I know how quickly it can be. Like I said, it can be taken away. Even Bronson, as simple as having a factory ride, to now he's working on his own bikes. Like, we're not going to get to do this forever. Every single time we go out there, there's a chance that we don't come back. And, I like, guess as deep as that is, it's just how it is. Like, we, we take that risk and stuff. So, I just enjoy it. Like, I love the fact that I get to come to the races every weekend, and maybe that's part of the reason I get so anxious that we have four weeks off between rounds. I just want to be here, so, and enjoy my, my racing with my friends. So, just enjoy it. Is burning out a concern of yours? Because that seems to be, like, a reoccurring theme with some of the things you've told me, even just in notes that I've gathered or, or you know, times that we've spoken, that there are certain guys that can, can put out a championship and they burn out and they only get that one championship. And there's a lot of guys who just live their life for this. Yeah. But you're, you're very much not like that. So how do you avoid burning out? And is that kind of a concern of yours? One million percent a concern. Like, there's so many things that go on outside of the racetrack that can burn you out super, super quick if you're uh, if you're not careful. So, right now, honestly, like the biggest thing is the fact that I have a good home life. Uh, I have some really good friends that they get to come over there. Like, I'm looking more forward to the next couple of weeks because I have James Spoli and Max Whale and hopefully my brother coming over and we're gonna hang out, we're gonna golf and we're gonna go ride motocross. And although it's still training, we're enjoying ourselves and being together. And my wife Shanna, she's gonna be doing the same stuff with us. So. The biggest thing is the home life away from the track. Like, if you can just get and block out all the stuff and not just be so consumed in it that it that it overwhelms you, I think that's what's going to save me because, I I mean, I was bummed at the beginning of the year, that's for sure. I uh, There's just so many things going on, and there's still things we need to continue to work on. But What things are those? Like, what was going on at the beginning of the year? Just uh, my own personal beliefs on how things are run, honestly. Like, some stuff, I think that my biggest thing is just making sure we have a good racetrack. It's bought, that's all I can really say is like, if we can have a good racetrack, I want to give the fans great, great, you no, know, like Lima. Lima was good. Lima half mile. Like, let's get it on. Like, that's that's what we need to do. That's what that's what people get fired up about. Everyone talks about how great Lima was. So let's just continue to have good racetracks. Um, you've mentioned more frequently this year that you really want to grow the sport. That's been something that even in your press conference interviews and in um, features, that seems to be your platform that you're working from. Why now? Like, why is it important for you now to grow the sport? And what have you been doing to do that? I see that. I've actually been super bummed. I, I haven't done that in any way, shape, or form, honestly. And it's that's kind of what's kind of had me a little bit burnt out, too. Um, it's no secret around the paddock that the sport's in a very, very vulnerable spot. Like. We have nine guys in Super Twins, and so easily Bronson and Davis can be gone. But luckily, they grind their ass off to, to be able to come out and race. Like, they work on their bikes every day of the week to, to be here. So I don't know how to do it. I've talked about it before. I just wish there was – I just want there to be more opportunity. I want there to be more positions for guys that deserve it, whether it's not having a buy-in to get in the class or there's more teams that are able to afford it and be a, be a part of the series. I just – 
I don't know, like I said before, I don't know how to do it. I want to do it. And that's kind of the part of the reason I've been burnt out. I think everyone kind of sees you as a nice guy in the paddock. You're that nice guy. You're always nice to everyone. You have um, very political, very, very, um, what is the word for it? Very nice responses to, to any question that we may ask you. And it, there's a piece of me that sometimes wonders what he's really thinking. And there's layers to be pulled back. There's a saying my grandma used to say, she used to always say, it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. And after Lima, there was a moment when I asked you as a follow-up question, and you had, I had said, did you use the roost intentionally uh, against Brandon Robinson? You were like, yeah. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, that's so strategic, and that's so saucy. And, like, I love the sauce. Like, the sauce is good sometimes. Yeah. Is there a reason why... You, are you trying to be friendly or is that just who you are it, do you hide the sauce underneath like there's got to be like a there's got to be a fiery br briar that we don't see all the time yeah i would almost say the fiery briar doesn't show up until race time honestly like i plan what i'm doing for the races all the time like every second that i'm near a racetrack i'm kind of picking things apart and something like you know brandon throwing some roost on him but the difference is it's like I do that, and then I want to go talk to him about it afterwards. We want to talk about the race. We want to talk about how good it was between me, him, Van Coy, Brandon Price, Bronson, whatever the case was. So I get fired up, I promise you. Like, Shana would probably tell you otherwise. But I always, when I get, I get a big head for sure, and she'll take me back. But I just always. So that may be your problem. You inflate a little bit more. I just try and always remember that this is an opportunity. It's not for granted. Like, it can go away so fast. So just gonna ride it out while I can I guess you mentioned that it can go away so fast who are you without racing do you know the answer to that question yeah no I do I'm I don't need to share it but I do know that like I said I have a really good home life fortunately and I love racing to death and I love the opportunity to compete but I also love my my home life and the things I do with my friends the darkness is full of demons Hazy creatures who lurk in the shadows, prowling under the cloak of dust. But we're not demons. We're beasts. Everything we do at the track shapes what we build for the street and the dirt. You can see how bad these guys want it. The race to the line. For us, racing is not for the trophies or the glory. We compete because it makes everything we do faster, more durable, and tested to a higher standard. For SNS, racing is the ultimate in proven performance, and we've been proving it since 1958. Tom Duma Fine Jewelers is proud to be the official jeweler for our eighth year to Progressive American Flat Track, providing championship rings for each class in 2021. TDFJ wants to be your jeweler. Check us out online for all your jewelry needs from engagement rings to fashion jewelry to watches in all price points to fit everyone's budget. Shop like a pro. Shop TDFJ.com. Wheeland designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for various industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheeland product is proudly designed and manufactured in America. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheeland is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Brought to you by Yamaha and its best-in-class lineup of power sports vehicles. For more information on how you, too, can experience the pinnacle of performance both on and off-road, visit YamahaMotorsports.com. Rocky Mountain ATV MC is proud to support the progressive American flat track Red Bull KTM singles team and racers everywhere from start to finish by being the primary source for off-road gear, parts, and accessories. Rocky Mountain ATV slash MC.com. Get ready. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. 
Ask your local Power Sports dealer. Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport, welcome you to this high action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you too can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited. We support the sport. The time is now to order your new Indian motorcycle. The all new Indian Chief models are arriving weekly. Come to Mad Max Indian Motorcycle to find your next ride or visit us online at maddiesmotorsports.com. Poland's Truck and Auto Centers specialize in heavy and light truck service and repair. Poland's is the only authorized service provider for the New York State Thruway for Western New York, providing 24 7 towing for heavy and light trucks as well as autos. Poland's is the official tow truck at the Weed Sport Speedway. want to hear what I did my first day of flat track my first day I was up on the podium and I called Hen we just checking checking it yourself I was. how did, did it I look was okay I, I felt, felt, felt all right about it that's okay you, you look good I think I called Henry Wiles your name you did. I did, didn't I? Yeah, and I heard about it for like a week and a half. Yeah, I've heard about it for about a year and a half. That was my first day. I don't understand why I didn't get any respect after that in flat track, because that was my first day, and I was like, why did I do that? And of all people, like, it's okay to throw yeah. your name out there, but of all people, like, you know, because for people, you know, his nickname is not like Sunshine. No. So Sunshine doesn't say like, yeah, and I know, I'll never forget you did. It's definitely the wrong guy to have it happen to. I no, think. it's not the right person. To, no. Any welcome between two turns. What I like about you is you're a man of style. And what I noticed right away was that you incorporated leopard yep. in your riding leathers, which I like leopard, but I'm also of the old school. So how much say do you have? I was kind of hoping you were going to wear your, um, your leathers up here, but it's a little bit hot. I was going to wear leopard pants, <laughs> pretending like I don't really actually have some, but I might. Probably definitely do. But, of course I do. But tell me, um, how much say do you have in what you wear on the track? So when I when I got my leathers done, they – so I we get to, like, send proofs and stuff, you know, just to get them approved. So when I fired off a leopard print proof, I was definitely expecting a no, but they didn't, and they went for it, and they liked it. So I was pretty game on at that point. And then I got the helmet done. So they pretty much gave me full reign. Like I said, as with a new team and stuff, I was kind of just threw off the first proof just to kind of see where they would grab for, and they let me do it. So. Were you looking at anything as inspiration? No. Well, I mean, basically just to not be boring. Seems like everybody's just kind of looks the same. So I, uh, I, over the winter, I, I put leopard print numbers on my little pit bike. So then I kind of just been carrying it and. Uh, so when I thought of the leopard print on my leathers, I just kind of just went with it the whole way. So tell me, you have tattoos. You know you'll never be able to get a regular yeah. job when you have a tattoo. Yeah, that's, that's the, hopefully that's the goal, actually. I don't right. I really want a normal job. <laughs> so when did you get your first tattoo? Uh, my 18th birthday, I got this tattoo here. It says, Take Chances, Chase Dreams with some checkered flags. And I drew it myself. Uh, do you, have, you drew your tattoo yourself? Well, I, I, I had some help designing it and stuff, but that was I pretty much... Uh, came up with the design. So explain this, the horns, because this... this Rocking on for life, man. Is that what it is? Yeah. Because some people think this means different things. Certain no. people say, like Gene Simmons, have you ever heard of the band Kiss? Yeah. He says he invented it. He didn't. Well, I'm just rocking Ronnie on James life. Dio. Do you know who Ronnie James Dio is? That I don't know. You don't know who Ronnie no. James Dio is? I'm so... I'm feeling really, really... Have you ever heard of Black Sabbath? Yeah. What kind of music do you listen to? Uh, pretty much everything. I... From around here, I listen to a lot of country, actually. But uh, I pretty much listen to anything. If you were in a, a car, country, a lot of if you were in a car, 
that was made in the 70s, yep. okay? Like, if you're in a car now mm -hmm. and you roll the window down, how would you roll, you roll down the window like that, right? With, like, a button, right? My van has crank windows. So you do know, there's some people your age, possibly, that don't know how crank windows work. So my first van, when I turned 16, my van had, everything was manual. So, like, I had to go around to lock each and every door by itself. And crank, so I'm pretty much, I'm pretty adapted to how them, how it used to be. How it used to be back in my I've, day. I've had one vehicle with power windows, and I had it for like six months, and then I went back to a crank window van. So are there certain races you look like, this is the one that's going to be the one, that I'm definitely going to have a good weekend? Uh, well, I'd sure like to do it in front of my hometown, that's for dang sure. Um, this is your hometown? Yeah. Well, not my hometown, but sort of. it's an hour away. Are you a New Yorker? Yeah. yeah. How long, yeah, you, you sound a little bit like a New Yorker. How long did you – you were born in New York. Yep. So was I. Were I you? was born in New York, too. Really? But how long did you stay in New York? Uh, I mean, I'm still here. I uh, – Oh, you so you live in New York now? Yeah, I just drove from my home. I did not morning. know that. Yeah. See? I, I, I could have called you Henry Wiles. It would have been even worse. <laughs> you could have. That would have been kind of funny, though, but not really. I lived – so I, I lived at home for forever, basically, until I was, like, 18 or 19. And then I had some opportunities to live elsewhere, and I – I lived in Michigan with Brian Smith for a few years. What was that like? Oh, I loved it. That's, me and him won a championship the same year together, and I lived in his basement. Was that 2016? Yep. yep. 2016, you won like 10 races. I did I did well in 2016, yep. And it was funny because literally I would, we, we would go home from the races, and I would just – I literally lived in Brian Smith's basement. And uh, we would just train every day together, and it was awesome. It was, uh, yeah, it was so when you're living with Brian Smith – Training every day. We had so much fun. Partying a lot. We we partied plenty. Um, we went out on the boat plenty of times, but we were serious when we had to be. But there, when we went, we won a couple weekends the same because we were obviously in different classes. So we'd like both win the same day or something, and we would have plenty of fun the next day. And it it was probably the best like uh, best I've ever done it, having a good heavy medium of being super serious about racing. And then enjoying when you were successful. Except for one thing, how serious are you about riding and training right now? Uh, pretty good. I was, so I broke my shoulder last year, and that, it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be to, like, get back into the swing of things. Um, but I'm, I still train pretty much every day. Okay, I, well, let me ask you this. I don't ride then. as much probably as I would like to, just because it's hard to find tracks to ride and stuff around here. But I definitely am the first, I, I train quite a bit. But 2016... You rode hard and you partied hard. I swear it's just because I was younger. In 2016, yet yeah, hard. I'm not saying what's the best way to go about things, but if I looked at 2016 and I was having fun and I was partying and I had 10 wins and I'm taking things seriously this year, I know I should probably just get back. Not on the good advice, but look at me. I should probably get back on the Mountain Dew program for sure. Okay. Well, anyways, it's nice to have you in New York. And I even called you by your right name. Yeah, we wouldn't have had a good start if you called me. No, that name. would have been a really bad. That would have been a bad start. No. At Tech Mounts, we support motorcycle riders, industry retailers, and OEMs for over 20 years. Proudly designed and manufactured in the USA, Tech Mounts has become the number one source for mounting any mobile device on any vehicle and comes with a lifetime guarantee. See all Tech Mounts products at your local motorcycle dealers, retailers, and on techmounts.com. KTM, ready to race.
Drag Specialties welcomes race fans. At Drag Specialties, our commitment to riding is a way of life. That's why we want to remind you that when you're ready to tackle maintenance or add performance and style to your ride, make your first stop a local dealer who stocks products from Drag Specialties. Drag Specialties. Enjoy the races. Klotz Synthetic Lubricants is proud to be the official lubricant of American Flat Track. Family owned and made in America since 1959, Klotz has built its reputation by answering the call of racers and performance enthusiasts who won't settle for anything less than superior synthetic lubricants. Racers and performance buffs around the world rely on Klotz to get them to the checkered flag. Order today at KlotzLube.com. Sideburn is the world's finest go-fast turn-left magazine. It is available to buy at Progressive AFT's trackside merchandise booths and is the official magazine of Progressive American Flat Track. For more information, visit SideburnMagazine.com. Ricky invited us down here to try some ice cream. So friends amongst friends, the three amigos down here sampling what we've been told is the best concessions in the AFT flat track schedule. We'll see how that holds up because we do do a lot of sampling. But Ricky, I'm going to hand this over to you. You can probably speak to ice cream better. Every place is famous for its certain cuisine. You know, if you're into NASCAR, you know Martinsville is famous for their hot dog. Everybody goes, oh, you go to Weed Sport. You got to get the ice cream. Now, of course, I did not want to have anything to do with ice cream in this weather. But because you people said you have to have ice cream, fine, fine, I'll do it for you. Now, Scotty ordered the most manly flavor at all. Mint Scotty, tell us what you ordered. Mint tingling. You are kind of a mint tingling guy. So I have fresh breath. Okay, go ahead. I got to have fresh breath, and it tastes good. Mm. How is the mint tingling? It's great. Okay, Kristen Beat, what did you get? Um, I have not gotten my choice, but they have a special. It's called the Q's 44. Of course, we're in Syracuse, a big college football state, so I'm going with the Q's 44. It's salty caramel ice cream with cookie pieces and orange-colored pretzel balls. I normally would have gone with the lemon sherbet because I'm more of a sorbet kind of girl, but um, when in Syracuse, right? Okay, let me ask, who, who wants to talk to me about this ice cream? Is this ice cream from this? Come up here. What's your name? My name's Maddie. Maddie, where does this, is this ice cream local to this area? Uh, I think so, yeah. You think so. Do you know, is there anybody here that works here that works here? Yeah. They can you give me a better, I'm just bad. Who knows, who knows, who can tell us about this ice cream here? Fast. We will get the fast. Boss. Wait, the boss is coming. Is it good? What's your favorite flavor? Um, the Rocky Mountain Raspberry. Rocky Mountain Raspberry, well. I got dirt Sunday. If it wasn't great ice cream, I'd say it's okay ice cream. It really is really good ice cream. Yeah. It's really good ice cream.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Progressive American Flat Track. It is Mission Foods New York Short Track presented by Mad Max Indian Motorcycle. I'm Scotty Dubler, the voice of American Flat Track. We're going to go down to the victory podium. Down there is my good friend, the rock star himself. You may have seen him on the Headbangers Ball on MTV. And now he's hanging out with us in American Flat Track. Please welcome Ricky Rackman. Well, thank you so much, Scotty Dubler. What a killer day, killer night we're going to have at Weed Sports Speedway. And you know what you didn't say, Scotty? I'm actually was born in New York, so I'm, I'm a New Yorker as well. But please, everybody, don't hold that against me. Welcome to Mission Foods New York Short Track, presented by Mad Max Indian Motorcycles. We are going to have such a great night. Let's get this night started. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats from the Motor Racing Outreach. Please welcome Raymond Rizzo. Thank you, Ricky. Let's pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for again for this opportunity to stand before you and say thank you for all of our blessings, seen and unseen. We're thankful for our riders. We pray that you protect them, help them to do their best, not only them, but their crew, their sponsors, and their families. Bless each and every one. Thank you for our staff, all of our leadership, and everyone that's working behind the scenes. Pray that you encourage them, strengthen them, help them to do their job well. Not only that, we thank you for all those that are serving around this world, oh God, to keep us free. We're thankful for each and every one. I pray you to bless, keep safe, and I pray also for all the fans here and those that are watching by TV. I pray that they see a great show and have a wonderful time together. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. Thank you very much, Raymond Rizzo. Now I'd like to please welcome up here Graham Marcus, the general manager of Maddie's Motorsports. Now you've got a couple dealerships that are all in this area, correct? Yep, we've got three dealerships in the Rochester area and uh, we're really excited to be here today. And this is a great area for motorcycle riding. I mean, right around here, I haven't spent that much time in Weed Sport, but I've been up to Watkins Glen and here. There's some beautiful riding here. This is the best place in the country, in my opinion. We got all the lakes going up and down, and we're coming into the fall season with all the leaves changing. This is my favorite time of the year coming. You sound so excited. <laughs> Come on, get excited. We're getting ready for some American flat track racing. We're ready to go. If you're Mad Max, you don't seem mad right now. We are ready. Okay, that's that's still okay, but but it's all right. We're gonna have a good time. Thank you very much, Graham Marcus, the general manager of Maddie's Motorsports. Now let's take a look back to some of the highlights from our last race. Clutches are out. Look at the tracks they're leaving on the racetrack. Up the inside, Dallas Daniels is there. Corey Texer is there. We got a three-way battle for second. Good to see this. Maybe this is a, a new Dalton Gauthier for the rest of the season. A lot of his friends and family here. Big win for him. Okay, he's gonna take the win on the 79. The light turns green, the factory KD is on the inside, lead him into turn one. Here comes the Suzuki. On the back tire, gets up right against the wall from up four. Battle for the lead, going into turn three. Here comes Whale to the bottom of the racetrack. Dog fight for the lead. Top and Max Whale. All the way from Australia, Max Whale gonna take the win. RPMs are up, clutches are coming out, a dead heat going into turn number one. Battle for the lead is heating up, here comes Briar rocking the high line. Up the oh. inside, he shocks Price. And here they come off of four to the checkered flag, it's going to be your two-time defending champion, Briar Bama taking the win. One, two, three, and let's go. meet the top five in our Mission Super Twins point standings. Currently fifth is the number 95. He is from Philpott, Kentucky, your Atlanta winner. Doing it for Essence and Racing Monster Energy Yamaha. They call him Jiggy Dog, number 95, J.D. Beach. Fourth place in the point standings, he comes from Mount Gilead, Ohio. He has six top four finishes in a row. He's sponsored by Mission Foods, Brew Systems of Dallas, Texas. Number 20, Captain Chaos, Jared Vanderkoy. Third place in the point innings, two wins here in 2021. He is sponsored by Indian Motorcycle, Progressive Insurance, Rogers Racing, SDI Racing. He is from Sebastian, Florida. Number nine, the Jammer, Jared Meese.
Up next, second in the point stakes from Oxford, Pennsylvania. Two wins here in 2021. Must by Mission Foods, Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas. The big number 44, the revolver, Brandon Robinson. And your current points leader, two-time and defending Grand National Champion from Salinas, California. Three wins, including the last two races in a row. Sponsored by Indy Motorcycle, Progressive Insurance, and SNS Cycle. Number one, Briar Bauman. Please rise and remove your hats. For our national anthem from the band Chasing Neon, give it up for Nick Stark. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets ran glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the Let's give it up for Nick Stark from the band Chasing Neon. Of course, you can check out Chasing Neon in the fan zone. People, I need to talk to you for just a second. For all you people here at Weed Sports Speedway, for all of you that are watching this on NBC, for those of you that are watching on Facebook Live, look, let's be honest. We are living in crazy times right now all around the world. But for this moment, we are here to put all of that aside and to rejoice in watching some awesome motorcycle racing. This is exactly what we need right now. Am I correct, Weed Sports Speedway? Thank you. So now, let's get ready. Let's get ready for some progressive American flat track racing from Weed Sports Speedway in beautiful New York, the state that I was born in. Back to you, Scotty. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ricky Rackman, and congratulations on being 